Hold on. Uh, the bot. Okay. Okay. Cool. Forks, you wanna go first? Yeah, I'll go first. Okay. Uh, hold on. Just give me a second. Yep. Just trying to open up a uh, open something up real quickly, and then five, four, three, Sounds good. two, one. All right, I'm going to keep it nice and short. Basically, the debate topic is Ghetto versus Ryu from the Culling Games. Uh, I have Ghetto right now. And I think my premise, obviously, is that Ghetto is going to win. And I think that the argument for that is that Ghetto statistically is more impressive than Ryu. I think that Ghetto was more powerful than a significantly amplified uh, Yuta Akotsu from Volume Zero, which I think is more impressive than anything that Ryu was able to display in his Culling Games fight. That's essentially it. Yeah, I, I'm just going to go ahead and say the opposite. I think Ryu just outscales. I think Ryu is more impressive, and Ryu has a pretty damning win con. I think is that Granite Blast is just going to tear Ghetto's head off. Okay. We can actually get into that, actually, because I think that durability is going to be a very important factor in this debate. Cool. Um, so you might have heard in my opening statement that I think that Ghetto was actually significantly stronger and more impressive against a significantly amped uh, Yuta Akotsu. You want to go over the Yuta? Wanna, the first thing I want to kind of get out of the way is would you agree that Volume Zero Yuta is significantly amped in his fight against Ghetto? See, my thing with Volume Zero Yuta is I don't think he scales mm -hmm. to a current Yuta. The Yuta that was amped, if you want to say he's statistically amped by the cursed energy welling up inside of him, that's fine. But I don't think that, let's say you start at X and X is 5, and you get amped mm -hmm. by times 5. But in Volume Zero, let's say he does start at this value, but in the current timeline of the manga, he would start at, say, 15. And then if he gets a times five amp from there, he's considerably stronger than he would be than if he was starting at five and getting a times five amp. I see. No, I understand. So you're basically saying you're going to argue that Culling Games Yuta, actually, let me type this down. Culling Games Yuta is stronger than volume zero amped Yuta. Yeah, and even if you want to say uh, like he's amped, sure. I think that version of him is still stronger, even if you want to say there's an amp. I think the version that currently fights Ryu is still stronger than this amped version of Yuta. I think he's more impressive as a sorcerer. I think he's also more complete as a sorcerer. Cool. Well, let's, let's focus on the statistics first, because whether or not he's more complete, I think, is a little bit divorced from the current point. So what yeah. I'm going to be arguing from, right, in terms of his amplifications, right, uh, there's three layers to it, and I'm going to type them down as well. Layer number one is that Yuta has a negative emotion amp i think that's pretty straightforward i don't think you disagree with that uh yes. layer number two is black flash amp because he does hit a black flash on ghetto which would give yep. him a 120 percent amp but maybe more significantly i'm going to combine three and four is that the black flash in question i think is a significantly stronger output of power than anything that yuda was able to display so i'm essentially arguing not that necessarily uh yuda amped just a, a regular amped Yuta is stronger than Culling Games Yuta. It's yeah. that that amped Yuta, that attack in particular, the Black Flash, should be stronger than anything that Yuta actually outputted. And I'm going to really quickly kind of divulge why I think this. So let's go ahead and let me grab the scan of this really quickly where we explain uh -huh. Black Flash. I know you understand, but I just want to explain for you. It's like you're in the Black zone, Flash. right? No, no, no. I'm talking about the attack specifically. The Yuta's Black, Black Flash? Flash? Yeah, so black, I'm talking about the attack specifically. I'm trying to say that Yuta is not only amped, but the attack itself, the individual attack, is stronger than anything that. Oh, you think the output. actual black flash is very damaging? Yes. Yeah, so I'm just trying to find oh, the scan really quickly for your for the uh, for the context for the audience that. Blah, hold on. Black but can we go over the first points first? Because nice. I would rather we go over those points about how he's damaged statistically, and using that in tandem with the black flash, I'd rather we go over that first, and then we can get into why that attack specifically is damaging. Uh, sure, I just want, wait, hold on. So I think the reason I want to get this forward is because I think we both agree he's amped. You're claiming that his amped state isn't necessarily stronger than his current state, yeah, which I, I don't necessarily amp, oppose. Yeah. Sure, what do you want to uh, point out? Yeah, so the thing with the amp is, you would agree that cursed energy in and of itself is negative emotions, correct? Correct. So when you get an amp of negative emotions, you're just gaining cursed energy, right? Um, Which amps your stats, because cursed energy reinforcement is what amps your stats, correct? I, I think it has to necessarily also be, actually, let me not say necessarily. I think it also has to be, to some extent, an increase in output. Because I don't think having more cursed energy in and of itself amps your stats. For example, well, what do you think you have, let, let's, 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 uh, let's represent it through an arbitrary numerical number. Let's say that yeah. your cursed energy level is a 10 and your cursed energy output is a 5. Even if uh -huh. your cursed energy level gets uh, amped to a 20, if your output remains a 5, it's not gonna be a, there's, no good, there's not going to be any difference. So I think it has to be output as well. 
it depends on what you categorize as output, though. If you think that Ryu's beam is something that's output, that's fine. But if you think punches are output, that's where I disagree. I think that punches are cursed energy reinforcement. So, for example, if someone were to gain an amp of negative emotions and they were to gain, let's say, 10 cursed energy reinforcement, their punches would become considerably stronger. Now, let's say this person's also a fighter who can use things like beams, which Yuta can do. He's shown to do that against Ryu and Geto. Yuta can use beams, and that's more so dependent upon output. So the beams that he uses are dependent on output, but his punches are depending on reinforcement. The black uh, slash is another physical attack, and all these things involve reinforcement. The only thing that did not involve reinforcement was the beam he used at the end, which, sure. again, I think this was used in tandem with Rika. So when he goes to fight with Rika, him and Rika pour their power into this one beam, and he's able to do that through output. I think you can gain output from doing something like that, or something along those lines, or even charging no, Cursor. Or or which is what's... Can we define uh, output really quickly? Yeah, sure, go ahead. What do, we, what do we think output is? Because I think that reinforcement is also a layer of output. When somebody says I output... Like, okay, I don't think there's a specific example given in the JJK series, so I think to an extent we have to rely on our understanding of output. Okay, wait, could you show that to me? Maybe I missed yeah, it. Yeah, so I think, it, I think it's not explicitly stated, but I think it's pretty heavily implied. The difference mm -hmm. between output and reinforcement would be someone like Ryu. So, for example, with Granite Blast, Ryu, that's categorically stated to be output, right? And it's stated that he can output the same amount of cursed energy without his cursed technique. And then it shows that him doing that in the form of a, ba a blast, right? And when it's referential sure. towards curse energy reinforcement, it's shown them going hand to hand with each other and saying, oh, he's like a water tank. He's sturdy. I can't really move him around like that. That's referential towards curse energy reinforcement. And they show that in the Ryu fight. And then when he uses a blast and even outputs it without the usage of his curse technique, it's still shown in the form of a beam. So I think output and by the way, Sukuna fought him right after. And it stated that Sukuna's output was back because of his, you know, how he sunk Megami soul. That's referential to a curse technique. So the output of curse energy more so in a ranged form. So for example, like a beam or curse uh -huh. Sukuna's curse technique, all those things are referential towards output. Reinforcement is more shown to be referential towards the fact that they can fight each other hand to hand. And that's why they talk about physical attributes. Like, oh, he's like a water tank. Like comparing him to a water tank, the fact that they can't move each other around. Well, it's just that I don't think that that distinction is actually made. I think that what we're told at least is that what, what reinforcement is and what cursed energy is is that you're fueling a given power system be it your fist or be it your cursed technique with cursed energy and there is a fueling there right wait I show think that because hmm? because again this is sad we're trying to establish some sort of you are trying to establish some sort of bridge yeah i want you to establish this bridge you're trying to bridge the two sure. things so you're trying to say that one of these things are equivocated by virtue of the fact that if you're reinforcing huh? something with cursed energy it could be in tandem with a cursed technique but what i'm saying is that if you have a cursed technique and it's shown in the fight that when they talk about output, they're talking about Granite Blast. But they mm -hmm. don't say he has the best Cursed Energy Reinforcement, right? In fact, he loses to Yuta in terms of some aspects of Cursed Energy Reinforcement. For example, Ryuta has a really weak body, but he's able to keep up combatively due to the fact that he has really good reinforcement. But mm -hmm. I would assume that Ryu has a better body in base because Yuta's just pretty much stated to be a weakling in terms Maybe. of his actual physical body. Okay. Right. I want to I wanna see so, where you take this point, actually. So you can keep on going with this. So you're trying to make okay. a distinction between the output of a cursed energy and the uh, you're trying to say it's not output when it applies to uh, energy yeah, reinforcement. So what, Ryu what, kind of, uh, what, kind of, uh, what kind of grander point are you attempting to make here? Yeah, so the, the overarching point is just the fact that Ryu can have the highest cursed energy output, right? Mm -hmm. But if your point were to be the case, this would mean that Ryu would also have to have the highest cursed energy reinforcement, which we know he does not, because mm -hmm. he was using two Yuta in certain instances that require cursed energy reinforcement. Like, for example, his Granite Blast is able to cause significantly more damage and do more damage and be more of a threat than just his punches, which is all his reinforcement. You don't oh. reinforce a cursed technique with cursed energy. You discharge a cursed technique. Okay. So, are you just trying to draw a disparity between his cursed energy reinforcement and like his granite blast? Like you're saying that those are different levels. That's fine. I don't think that necessarily interacts with the point I'm going to be making. So we can just. I think for now, unless it ties back later and we find some sort of relevancy in that, I think we can move on. Because the 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 greater point I was trying to make was that here, and I'll I'll just post it in chat for the context uh, for the uh -huh. audience. I'll post it in VC scans. But the black flash, in and of itself is a it is taking something and taking it to the power of 2.5 right and so yep. for some for some clarity on that for some context uh we have heavyweight boxers in the real world that can hit with a psi a pressure per square inch i believe it is of around 1000 and if you were to apply a 2.5 power to a thousand psi that becomes 31 million psi wait, so folks, here's so the point hold on wait, 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 here's the point i'm yeah, going ahead. to make to you okay 
Ghetto is hit with a black flash from Yuta and doesn't even bleed. He just kind of shakes it off, gets up, and that's when they engage in the final clash. What I'm going to argue is, even if I want to grant, and uh, sure, I'll grant it, that Yuta got stronger by the culling games, for it to be a, a, a multitude of strength difference to make up for the black flash that he hit in volume zero, I think that requires an extraordinary amount of evidence yeah. that is not oh. present. Yeah, so two things. Number one, mm -hmm. The overarching point ties into why you're going to make the equivocation between cursed energy reinforcement and cursed energy output. Because what we were initially talking about is what Black Flash actually amps. So if Black Flash does not amp your output and it just amps your reinforcement, which is what we just went over, because I said there's a distinction between reinforcement mm -hmm. and cursed energy output, and I said Black Flash is able to amp your reinforcement. I don't know if it's able to amp your output. I even said multiple times if you want to bridge the gap yeah. between those two things, then you can go ahead and do so. But sure. the second thing that you just said about Black Flash, the actual attack itself, if you're saying that that's damaging, right? The problem I have with that is the beam that Yuta released afterwards. If this point were to be go to were to go to me, the point about reinforcement not being equivocated, to, uh, what's it called output? If that point were to go to me, that means the beam afterwards. If you were not able to justify it, that means that beam was just a normal beam. There's no amp to be had. That beam was just the power of Yuta and Rika in tandem being shot at him. That beam did considerably more damage than the. Sure, we'll flash. get into that. We'll get into. I do want to. I do want to get into that, but I think that's let's let's cover this point first, really quick. I want to say one thing. I want to say one okay, thing. Go, wrap my point. go ahead. That beam not only cut his body in half it broke through a uzumaki not only did i agree it cut his body i agree half, it cut a uzumaki i absolutely agree and um, we can get into that but let's let's cover this first point first okay yeah uh you, we that's fine if we can make the disparity between cursed energy reinforcement and uh output that's fine but surely you would say and it actually just states right there in the screenshot whatever we want to categorize it as whether it be reinforcement or output it is amplifying the attack potency right so that attack potency as i went over in the example if it's a boxer they're going from 1000 psi to 31 million psi and something going to the power of something else is an exponential increase so that is to say that that's just how high it is that's just how high the difference is with a regular like heavyweight boxer imagine the difference for these superhuman beings and the reason why i think that the point you made earlier actually goes into my favor is because if we agree that cursed reinforcement and cursed energy output are two distinct categories then the statement about reuse granite blast having the highest cursed energy output actually wouldn't contradict Yuta's black flash being stronger because those are two different categories. So what I'm going to say, and then we can get into the Rika blast. We, have after. A problem with that. we can get into the Rika blast after what I'm going to say is that Yuta hitting a black flash with that 2.5 to the power of on ghetto and ghetto being fine afterwards is a it's such an insane durability feat i'm not convinced you can Wait, do yeah i have damage. a massive problem with that though What's that? that's why i make the distinction between cursed energy output and cursed energy reinforcement that beam you agreed already that beam does considerably more damage than the black flash the black flash hit him in the chin and he didn't really take a lot oh, of damage really quickly right? for clarification is your is your All refutation right. is your refutation going to be contingent on the beam point because we can just jump right into it if it is uh, yeah, it's more so the fact that applying these numbers to Black Flash, first of all, like I said, I think Yuta gains considerable strength since the calling games, or since Volume Zero, and Yuta in base then, even if you want to say, oh, times 2.5, or for the power of 2.5, yes. I don't even think it's like that, I don't even think it's devious, because I don't think he was that strong, and that's shown, because when he uses that blast against Ghetto, that blast does so much more than the Black Flash could ever even be capable of doing. He no, shoots I agree. that blast, 100%. it cuts through Uzumaki, and on top of cutting through an Uzumaki, it also cuts through Ghetto's body, right? So it goes through 100%. their ability and through the strongest attack. 100%. Now, to tie this in, to tie mm -hmm. this in, in the calling games, uh, if you want to say this, the Black Flash is a 120% amp, correct? Yes. Yeah, okay. If the Black Flash is a 120% amp, you have a current Yuta who's much better at using curse technique, who's much better at doing all these things, more complete as a sorcerer, like I said earlier, right? If he is to do this, and it's still stated that Ryu has better cursed energy output, and Yuta then, even then, has to charge his cursed energy output, ramping it up to be a higher level than what it would be mm -hmm. off some sort of immediate release, and Ryu still blasts that away, Ryu's Granite Blast is considerably stronger than that beam. Which would be so here's my problem with that. Here's my problem with that. I'm not sure if you forgot this detail. It's okay if you did. That beam was not a regular charged up beam. That was a binding I... vow beam. That was a... Oh, I don't think that's true at all. Hold what on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Go ahead. So in volume zero, it's explained that Yuta makes a binding vow. In exchange for his life, he is going to allow Rika to bypass the limits of cursed energy with that blast. The, no reason, nothing, the reason nothing is given up, as Gojo explains after, is because... 
the binding vow in question, whether or not Yuta's life is taken, is up to who he made the promise to. That being Rika. You know the problem? And Rika decides not to take that promise, so she got the binding of vow effects without holding Yuta responsible for his end of the bargain. So, hold on. Cool. I'm going to wrap this point up really quickly. Go ahead. That Black Flash was... Sorry, that... that blast was significantly amped because the binding vow in question was in place it did more damage to ghetto than the black flash and also i would argue uh, it being stronger than the black flash is implied by the nature of the binding vow what is the limit of something the limit of something is the highest threshold the ceiling of power that something can you know the problem with that hold on really quickly i'm sorry i'm I'm not trying to ramble i'm almost done yeah, so fine. the Black Flash would be included within a limit of cursed energy. It is something that you can achieve. It's one of the pinnacle of cursed energy uh, output or whatever you want to call yeah, it. That's so fine. for this binding vow to exceed the limit almost inherently means that it is vastly stronger than the Black Flash anyway. Now so there's two problems. Yeah, okay. Now there's two problems. Because again, we weren't you weren't able to bridge the gap between cursed energy reinforcement and output for a Black Flash. So all a Black Flash would do for cursed energy output so far, according to your own point, it wouldn't really do much for it unless we go to get into that. But so far, I proved that there's a distinction between the two. I'm fine with granting that Black Flash grants you reinforcement. I don't know what it does to your output. If you want to say there's a 20% empty your output, I'm fine with that. Or it puts you at 120% of your current abilities. That's fine. It can do that. My two problems with that still would be the fact that this binding vow thing is super stupid. Because you have, again, the binding vow is something in which you give something up in exchange for strength. You would agree, correct? Um... The way you're framing it, no. Because the way you're framing it, you're saying that Yuta, correct me if I'm wrong, you're framing it as if Yuta would have had to die before. No, that's not what I'm saying. Sorry, would have had to die for the condition to be activated. No, that they that's exceed. not what I'm saying. Okay, no, what are you saying then? All I'm saying is, if a binding vow involves that Yuta's giving his life to Rika, which is, oh, you Rika, I give you my love and stuff. Are you saying that he doesn't still love her? That binding vow still exists. It's like, it's like for example, what? if you have a binding vow, I'll, I'll just put this into perspective for you. Let's say you have a binding vow, like heavenly restriction or some shit like that. I don't mm-hmm. know. If you have that sort of binding vow and the conditions are still being met, which is that you gave up all your cursed energy, right? Because the condition in which you gained your physical aptitude was through giving up your cursed energy. If you were to give up your cursed energy, that means the condition for your heavenly restriction being the case is still present. So if Rika still, lo- or if Yuta still gives his life to Rika and still loves Rika, that means that this amplification and strength, them fighting in tandem with each other, is still perfectly fine and being present, presently shown to us in the manga. So Wait, I'm, s- I'm really game, confused. I'm really confused but, because the binding vow condition wasn't met. Hold on, I'll try to find the clip. But what happens is... Rika decides not to cash in on what Yuta offered in exchange for the Binding Vow's power, and then her soul moves on. In fact, Rika's not even there to be on the end of the Binding Vow anymore. I'm talking about in the current timeline. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. In the current timeline, the Binding Vow was made between Yuta and Rika's soul specifically, and that soul moved on. It no longer exists in this plane of existence, and we're told by Satoru Gojo that she decided not to pick up on the condition of the Binding Vow Yuta proposed. This not, so hold on. Not only is the binding vow condition of Yuta giving his life away no longer relevant after Rika declines it, but it's not. But Rika, the person he made the binding vow with, doesn't even exist on this plane of reality. Wait, 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 of there I'm is no binding vow in question right now. This is, this is super also, simple. Let's also, I think you brought up you brought up a point about how I didn't address the output thing, and I wanted to mention. Yeah, it we can get into that, but I think this is more. Wait, wait, wait. I, I just it's just that you. I'm not saying you snuck it in, but if I don't address it now and I forget too later, no, yeah, I'm fine with on it because it. of a technicality. No, no, no. I'm saying if I forget too later and i lose on oh, a yeah, technicality okay, right. i don't want that to happen so right. again if you want to differentiate between cursed energy output and cursed energy reinforcement that's fine yeah. we can recognize that differentiation but we can also recognize that at the end of the day the black flash as well as the granite blast are both measures of ap those both have to do with attack potency uh-huh. i'm saying that the attack potency of utah right who mind you his cursed energy reinforcement was enough to palm granite blasts against ryu and this cursed energy rein sorry this cursed energy reinforcement of his was taken up to the power of 2.5 against a ghetto with a black flash while he was while hold on while he was amped and it did borderline nothing to ghetto i'm saying that that display of ap that did very little to ghetto is more impressive than really like anything ryu has done so yeah, we can we can make that proof. differentiation but talk to me about ap prove the ap yeah, yeah, of granite so blast three problems like? i think i think you loki just gave up your argument just by saying that because the problem is you know yuda's output if you were to output that beam right and we're trying to make some sort of equivocation he outputs that beam and that beam gets swatted away by ryu's granite blast but then when he goes to swat ryu's granite blast actually prior in the fight 
he goes to swap that granite blast and he does perfectly fine with it because his durability he's better with reinforcement than he is with output that's my point yeah but i just so, made the argument sorry i understand your point but we just went over the argument that the grant sorry the the beam in question was completely different in nature it was vastly more powerful i'm not talking about that beam. That was oh shot God, at i'm not talking about that beam i'm are talking, you talking about, about which beam are you talking about so first of all, we're we're still on that point. We're not going past it. You said you wanted to address something so you didn't forget it. So we yeah. went over that. And I'm just saying that in comparison, his durability is shown to be greater than his output, which is why there's a distinction between the two things. Because someone like Ryu can be stated to have the highest curse energy output in the calling games, but still have worse reinforcement category categorically based things. So for example, durability, mm -hmm. strength, all those things. He can still be worse in those categories, but have greater output, which is why I'm saying there's a that's distinction fair. to be made between the two things, right? Okay. But to continue on to the point that's actually being addressed right now, the point we were on about the beams, two things. You said that the, the soul isn't present anymore. Think of it like this. Imagine if there was a binding vow in which something like heavenly restriction, where you give up all your cursed energy and you gain a bunch of physical aptitude, correct? Now, let's say you had the that's opposite, different. opposite of that. Oh, sorry, so, go ahead, finish. finish. Let's finish. say you had the opposite of that. Let's say you gave up all your physical aptitude for a bunch of cursed energy reinforcement, right? Theoretically, you could do something like that. You give up something in exchange for something else, right? Now, imagine if you had the same amount of both things, it would create the same result. It would create you being A, a really physically apt person like Toji, or B, a really cursed energy apt person like Ryu, uh, Yuda, correct? If you had sure. the same amount, theoretically, yeah, okay, cool. So if you want to say Rika's curse is on Yuda, and that's why this binding vow was able to take place. Now, in exchange, let's just take it's the opposite. Now they work in tandem with each other. And he says, oh yeah, Rika, come give me everything. So they're still connected in some way. I'm not going to say what the connectivity is between the two, but there's still some form of connection that grants them a larger form of power. Because when they use that manifestation link mode, it's explicitly stated that he gets stronger. Yeah, he gets stronger, sure, because she's a well of cursed energy that he can use to refuel and amp himself. That's one thing. But the binding vow that you gave, the example of the binding vow you gave, is completely disanalogous. There are different types of binding vows. The binding vow in question that you're talking about is one that you make with yourself, or a, 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 a purely personal binding vow. The one we're talking about is a binding vow made between people. And I think that's stronger. So hold on, and Satoru Gojo explicit. No, it's not about whether or not it's weaker or stronger. It's about whether or not the condition conditions are the same. Satoru Gojo explicitly says, hold on, Satoru Gojo explicitly Why? states that the conditions are different, that one party can choose whether or not to accept after the fact the proposition that the other party made to them. So that's one of the two reasons I'm saying that this binding vow is no longer in effect, because A, Rika rejected that's not his- the Hold on, A, hold on, A, Rika- That's a straw man. Wait, 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 wait. wait. You, I told you I would cut you off if you were you, No, you said that the binding vow was still active because no, you just No, that's not what I... Oh, my God. You didn't oh God, say that? No, no. What did you say then? No, what did, I if said you didn't say that, what did you say? I literally said the opposite of that. I said there can be some form of new binding vow or some new type of thing. I'm not going to give it a term. I literally explicitly stated I'm not going to apply a term to it because I'm not going to go through why this is applicable. I'm just saying... You think they made a new binding vow? Yeah, it's something along those lines, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a binding vow. It's just something in which they work. Yes, because literally when he uses his manifestation, if this weren't the case, he wouldn't get stronger during the manifestation. Because you agree that when Rika was pouring his power, hold on. If Rika was pouring his power into her or her power into him, they were getting stronger by doing so. And that's why that beam, that was a that was an exact result of that. That was a byproduct of them putting their strengths together. Hold they on. put their strengths and they use them. Hold on. They put Sorry. their strengths and they use them in tandem with each other to be able to create that. It's a byproduct of their relationship growing stronger together. Do you want ghetto? Wait, hold on. That's fine. Wait, 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 hold on. Hold on. I'm not done. Sorry. Gege literally right. stated. Yeah, that's fine. Gege literally stated explicitly in one of the data books, I'm pretty sure, that when their relationship gets stronger together, they grow stronger together. That's fine, but what you described is a completely different relationship, okay? What I'm describing is a That's binding fine. The strength vow. conclusion could be hold the on. same. Hold on, hold on. It's not th the strength and conclusion are not the same. What Why? I'm describing, yeah, I'll explain. What I'm Go describing ahead. is a binding vow that exceeds the limits of cursed energy that is to Wait, say that, hold on what that is to because that's what that's what Judas says that's what is said oh, about oh, the, that's what is said about the binding vow yeah, go ahead and show me that okay does anybody have where it's said in volume zero or otherwise material that it is to exceed the limits of cursed energy zero binding vow Let me see if I can find it. If anybody else can find it, that'd be really cool. I don't even think they explicitly state that the connection between them is a binding vow. I'm just granting that. I don't think they explicitly the state The connection it. between them isn't inherently a binding vow. They made a specific binding vow. between. Wait, wait, can show me, show me the statement about how whatever it is. I, I could grant that it's a binding vow for now. I don't have a problem with that. Show Actually, me that, that 
explicitly goes beyond the limits of cursed energy. That's stupid. Sure, that, that doesn't even make sense. sense. I think. Hold on, it's, it, it's not stupid because there's How actually. The limits of hold on, I'm trying to up. give you an example. Hold on. Go ahead. All I'm gonna say is, Forks, is it doesn't make any sense. Because how could you go beyond the limits of something that you're literally utilizing and using it to fuel your power? I already said the byproduct of the relationship. Because binding out. Together. Okay. Wait, hold on. The byproduct of the relationship growing stronger together was a cursed energy beam that was stronger than a black flash. That's what it was. Okay, so and hold on. Look at VC scans. Look, you you can you can say that. Look in VC scans. I gave you an example sure. of of this not only applying to May May in a very similar example, but Relax Z Killer provided examples of Yuda making the binding vow and him and Ghetto saying he's sacrificing himself to remove the limits on the curse power. And in the same example, by the way, the Mei, Mei example is the exact same thing where she forces the bird to making binding vow to kill itself to erase the curse. That would be a binding vow July of the trade off. So 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 what I'm saying is that in this binding vow specifically, and even in the supporting evidence I gave. Okay, the blast in question was That's not the just. Wait, wait, this hold is on, the the, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to finish a point. Sorry right, for interrupting your. Inter sorry for interrupting your interruption. Yeah, that's fine. This is retarded. Okay. Keep going. You can think that, but the VC scans say otherwise. The proof says otherwise. Yeah, you're I'm trying. That the, okay. okay, you're trying to propose that they were simply adding their power together for the blast. That it was purely additive. What I'm saying is that based off these scans, what's actually that's not what happening, I said, by the way. What's actually happening is that they that's are another going comment. beyond the. Sorry. Did you, you know what, if you, did, did you just want to monologue for the next five minutes? We can do that. No, I'm saying that that's not what happened. Okay. You strawman me. So then look I told at the you, so, if you cool. strawman me, I would cut you off. Cool. I told you then that. Then look at the VC scans, hear my argument, and then refute it. This is explicitly telling us they're going that past the limits of the, by, they're going past the limits of their cursed energy. Do you have a problem uh -huh. with that? But do you, yes, yes, are they, yes. Are they just lying in these scans? What's going okay. on? Okay. So it says that she can push the blackbird past the limits of cursed energy, right? Past the limit as, of well as, system, as well as Ghetto saying he's sacrificing himself to remove the limit okay, on the so curse power. First of all, yes. first of all, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's removing the limiter that's applicable currently. That's all I'm saying. So if a blackbird has a value of five in terms of cursed energy, and then she makes this binding vow that facilitates the blackbird having like ten, which goes beyond its current limit, right? That doesn't uh -huh. mean it goes beyond the limits of cursed energy itself. What it's doing is it's going beyond the limits of its current cursed energy. I already brought this up. I said a black flash can okay. bring out your limitations and bring out what you are currently capable of. So if Yuda, for example, if someone like Yuda, who is not really proficient at manipulating cursed energy in this point in the story, he's not great, as great as he is at it right now. If he were to do something like this, he's removing that limiter, right? And he has more cursed energy to draw from. Initially, this limiter is in place because the relationship was not growing stronger. I brought this up already. If this That's is just true, what it says. hold on, wait, hold on. Yeah, that me is now. what it says. It says no, it relationship... says it's removing the limits on the curse energy of the curse power, not Yuda's power. It's talking about Rika. She's the one who fires the blast. But second of all, I didn't argue that it removes every note. Like, wait, yes, it is talking about Rika. Hold on. Way. I just said it's talking about Rika. You just said it yeah, was talking about Rika. Yeah, that's what I'm Yuda. saying, too. Okay, no, I'm just saying be clear. Removed, I said but you also, the limiter on so, Rika's cursed energy. That's another okay, straw Okay, that's fine. But also, I didn't say it removes all concept of cursed energy limit for, like, in its entirety. I don't mean so that. I mean, clearly there are limits to the cursed energy thresholds and abilities. Yeah, exactly. That's all I'm saying. And this is where the argument for this being far stronger than the Black Flash comes from. Because we know that the Black Flash is within the limits of one's cursed energy. If you can yeah, manipulate exactly. cursed energy, you can hit a Black Flash. So when you say that Ghetto was torn about uh, apart by this beam, but he took no damage from the Black Flash, Yes. It's not an anti-feat because we know that if it's simple deduction, if the black flash is within the limit of the cursed energy in question, and this this binding vow exceeds the limits of the cursed energy in question, then that's the not, binding oh vow is God, stronger yeah. than the black flash. It's a yeah, hold on. That's, uh, that's a question bag. That's a question bag. Listen. How is that a question bag? Yeah, I'll tell you why. We're trying to establish whether or not this is true. We're trying to see if this is really what happens via this binding vow thing. And I already told you, if a crow has a value of five, right? And, and then the crow gets exceeded by some sort of binding vow, and it gains like five strength from it. It exceeds its current limits of five, right? Again, we don't know how much they exceed the limitation by, okay? Because we have some sort of relationship amp. This is not even a black flash amp anymore. When they do the relationship amp thing, it's their love in tandem with each other being used to create this beam as a byproduct. So again, That's we don't have not a quantification true. for you're, yes, wait, it, it, you're, okay, you're we can go over that. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, you're hold on, just stop misrepresenting. Wait, stop so, cutting wait. me off. 
can send you, you it from you the light man, novel. Man. I don't know you why you're man. yapping. I can send you it from the light man. novel. You straw it's man. Way, man. Hold on. I can send oh, it from the light novel. You said it's not just every time you say it's just them combining their love, it makes me want to that die. Is what, that's, hold on. Do you want to That's see, not what it is. That? They are not just using the power of friendship. They are literally, Yuda is literally proposing he sacrifices himself to okay, exceed you the limit of current energy. Hold statement? on. Also, I want to make it clear you didn't prove I was question begging. You just repeated your por former argument. Well, I want to know do you disagree? Wait, yes, you are. Do you dis oh wait, God, do you disagree with this? Hold on. Yes or no? Do you disagree? Do you disagree that this binding vow that exceeds the limits of cursed energy is stronger than the Black Flash Yuda? Okay, so once again, once again, I'm going to send you the statement from the light novel so that you can read it and be wrong. Sure, uh, send it, but then I want you to answer answer my question. But what Gege explicitly states is that their relationship in tandem, when it grows stronger, the byproduct of that is a higher amount of strength. The whole Black Flash thing is irrelevant. The problem with that is, if they have a 20% amp, but the relationship thing is what really gives them considerably more strength, because you already agreed the Black Flash didn't really do that much damage. If it's true that the yes. Black Flash did not cause a significant amount of damage, but then the new int variable that's introduced is the relationship thing. If the relationship thing is the new variable that's introduced and the beam is able to do considerably more damage, because I don't think Ryu's, I don't think Yuda's, uh, what's it called? Yuda's output would be considerably lower at that point in time. So if Yuda sure. were able to do this off this new relationship amp variable, if that's true, then that means that the relationship amp would be greater than the Black Flash amp. Sure, you can send it. Okay, you can yeah, send cool. it saying that. Infinity, you sent it to me yesterday. Do you have the? Do you have the? Very curious. Called, light novel thing. About. Yeah, I'm talking about how their relationship amp is just too greater, so, and when they do, go ahead. No, I'm just curious that you can. I heard what you said. It says. I just want. You yeah, to I'll go ahead and send you that. Infinity, do you have that skin? You said. Yeah, wait, wait, yesterday. Bridge. What what skin is it? Because if I have that, I'll it's, send it. it's the light novel skin where it says that when Ryu and you, not Ryu, sorry, when Yuta and Rika go closer together, their strength goes closer too, or gets stronger. They get stronger together. Realize that like, whether like or not. About when it says, you realize wait, it doesn't. Wait, in, in the light novel, wait, force. Right. You asked me for a scan. I'm trying to ask around for the scan because I know I have it somewhere. Oh, that's fine. I understand. I just wanted to say that doesn't even contradict my argument. We'll, we'll see. We'll see when you post it. Yeah, I, yeah again, wait, wait, what, what are you saying? Wait, repeat what okay. the scan says. Yeah, so it says that when Rika and Yuda grow closer together, like in terms of love and shit, when they do that, that they become stronger together. That's all it says. It says that they become lo like a lot stronger. It's in the light. So how how does the that black data book? Wait, so I'll tell you, I'll tell you why that. So are you gonna post judge, it in VC scans? Yeah, I'll post it, but I'll just make the argument and then I'll go find it because I'd rather just all right, be clear what the argument is. Sure. So awesome. see. The argument is that if the Black Flash caused no damage, and we know that a Black Flash gives you 120% amp, right? And then you go on to show that they, the only change variable, not the Black Flash, but the only change variable since then, since the Black Flash is what was landed already and caused little to no damage, the only change variable since then would be the fact that Yuda and Rika, like, had this love amp thing. And when they had this love amp thing, they were able to create a beam as a byproduct that was able to cause significantly more damage than the Black Flash. So all I'm saying is, is that if their connection between each other is strong, which I think is what the link mode is, like I said earlier, is just a strong connection between the two. I think that if there is a strong connection that's present, then they're able to operate at this level. Keep in mind, like I said, if you have a 120% amp from someone who is at value five versus from someone who's at value 15, which I think I've established that he's considerably stronger in this timeline, then the amp that you gain would be considerably less. Even if you had someone who is amped based off negative emotions, which again, we brought up how cursed energy is just negative emotions, you have a larger pool to draw from and you're able to do more with it. But that doesn't change the fact that reinforcement or re actually utilization, your efficiency with cursed energy, which is what he gains strength in, changes your strength. When he gains more efficiency, he would become stronger. So even if you have a large pool of cursed energy to draw from, it doesn't mean that you are efficient at utilizing that pool. But now that he is efficient at utilizing that pool, I brought this up three times, he's more complete as a sorcerer, and he also still has that connection with Rika. That's is the whole argument. Any, I can send you this there, game. Are, you, are you done? Yeah, and I can send you the scan if you want for the light novel. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be vastly more concise. No, no offense to you, but like you, can you, you keep on saying that the only thing that's changed is that they're like using the power of love or friendship or whatever, but that's just not true. I already sent what you else the scans. Doing? 
Yeah, it's a little thing called a sacrificial binding vow that exceeds the limits of Rika's So their relationship growing together. The That's not their relationship thing. growing together. What? Do you wait, think that Wait, wait, stupid. do you think that every time I like love my mom a little more every day, that's me making a binding that's vow with her? So like I, I just I just don't understand. You that's keep this analogy. You just keep analogous. representing it. Listen, I can agree with you that as their relationship grows closer, they grow stronger. That has nothing to do with whether or so not we were we were hold on wait, wait 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 hold on i go let ahead. you go i let you go, go that ahead, has go nothing ahead. that has literally nothing to do with whether or not we are explicitly told from characters in the story that it was a binding vow that helped rika exceed her limits of cursed energy way, that, that was what fueled the final attack you, send you huh you want to send me that we already sent it to you relax Z wait, killer. when did you, you that was for a crow that was for a crow because from what I wait, did you miss the first? Like, wait, look, look right above the crow. Look literally, yes, just, like, just scroll up a little bit above the crow. I sent Maymay's crow as supportive evidence. Wait, also, I think wait, wait, he's sacrificing thing. himself. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Again, when he says sacrificing himself, he's thinking that he's if there if you're trying to establish this as some sort of binding vow, all he does is say that I love you now and I'm going to give you my life, as in I'm going to be in love with you, and we can actually work together rather than separately, because we know that prior to this, what Rika uh -huh. was doing was moving on her own will, but now what happens is they're able to move more off Yuta's will. It's more so influence off I, Yuta's will. No, no, hold on. I think okay. that when you can influence something more off your own will and use it in tandem with each other, it's actually stronger than when it's just some sort of emotional outburst. I'm sorry, hold on. I'm going to pull up volume zero because now, no offense, I'm not convinced that you either read it or watched yeah, it. Yeah, is not. When Yuda says, when right Yuda now. says, I'll give you my life, it's not fucking figurative. It's a binding vow. It's literally, I will die with you so we can exceed this limit. Hold on a second. I'll wait, pull wait, up hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. So I'll pull, wait, I'll pull up volume zero. Wait, 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 hold on. Tell I'm me what's sorry. the condition that's being met then? What's the condition that's being met? Yeah, go so ahead. Hold on. So the condition that, hold on. I'll explain it, okay? The condition that would be met is that Yuta would die in exchange for this power increase. The only reason, as I said, that Yuta does not die is because Rika, after the fact, she decides not to kill, like, not to hold him down to his end of the bargain, as Gojo explains, and then her soul departs. Hold on. So Z Killer just sent it. Let's see. In exchange for, lend for lending me her power, I kind of promised Rika I'd go to the same place as her. That's that nigga dying. He's going to the spirit realm with Rika. He only doesn't because oh, so you're saying the condition is the it. fact that he's even agreeing to that. Yes, he promises her his. Oh life. yeah, that's fine. Wait, wait, hold on. That's fine. My yeah. whole point revolves around the fact that if they still have some sort of connection and they're able to use this connection, rather instead of based off Rika's will, they're able to base it off Yuta's will. I think that connection can still be as strong, if not stronger, because like I said, there's multiple things that play into it. It's not just one amp. There are multiple things that play into it, such as the fact oh. that Yuta is more efficient as a sorcerer with cursed energy efficiency. He has more cursed energy reinforcement. He's more efficient. He's able to use more cursed techniques. There's so oh. many things that play into why Yuta himself individually is stronger. Now, imagine, like I said at the start, if you have a value of 10, right? And let's say this multiplier is actually greater than the multiplier later, even if I were to grant that, right? Let's say this multiplier is greater. There's still more things in his arsenal that would add up to create a higher multiplier. So, for example, That's... if there was only a base weight, the problem is... In the calling games, what Yuta is, is he's a more individually capable person. Now, let's say you have someone who's not individually capable. So, Volume Zero Yuta is not as individually capable as current Yuta is. But then you multiply him with someone who gives him a greater level of strength, a higher threshold of strength than he could ever have individually. But now you have a person who's individually already at this level, who's crazy now. And then you also give him a link mode amplification, which we know is a heavy amp, right? And also wells him up with cursed energy again, which is what happens in this, in volume zero two. He just gains a large amount of cursed energy. When he gains this large amount of cursed energy as a byproduct of that, he's able to create that beam that slashes through ghetto. Do you mind if we uh, conclude after this? Because I think we're going in circles. So I'll respond to what you said and we conclude on this oh, specific- Do you want the light novel statement? Uh, yeah, you can send it if you want. I'm not Atta convinced book? that it's going to be relevant. So like, here's the thing. Yeah, I'll send it. So again, there, the, the, the binding vow in question, right, is not still intact. It's just not, right? Like, Rika isn't there anymore. Her soul moved on after this. So one half of the party who would be upholding the binding vow, hold on, up one half of the party that was meant to uphold the binding vow in the first place literally doesn't exist in this plane of reality anymore, not to mention that she already turned down Yuda's offer of his life. That's how transactions work, okay? If I offer 
to mow somebody's lawn in exchange for $10 and I mow their lawn and then I say, hey man, don't worry about it. You don't have to you don't have to pay me $10. The transaction has ended. I'm not required or relegated to mow his lawn anymore after that. And that's ignoring the fact that Rika's not even there anymore anyway. Her spirit is gone. That bitch is dead. She's gone forever. So you said that I strawmanned you really quickly. What do you think I strawmanned you on? I can respond to it after you deliver Yeah, it. so what again, I never, hold on. You can check VC scans. For in VC scans, it's proof that this same type of thing, I didn't say that it's the exact same type of implication. I said that the conclusion would be similar in which if you have someone who's able to produce or output a certain amount of strength. I think that current Yuta can output, if not more strength than he was able to back then. He's able to use multiple things in his arsenal now that he was not able to use before. Uro Sky Technique. He's able to produce, he's able to produce these same type of cursed energy beams against the person with the highest output in the calling game, stated to have the highest output. This would be referential towards Yuta too. And Yuta and Rika both shot beams at him. He has a higher output than both of those things. Now, just to show you, I was not saying that these two things are the same amp. I'm saying it causes the same conclusion. So to go over the relationship thing, you can check VC scans. Mm -hmm. Here's this. And here's the fact that Rika can still get agitated and have My like some sort of heavy ass that. connection to Yuda. That way, as the relationship progresses, man, hold on. So do yeah, you, that's you know fine. Like, hold on. Hold wait, wait, wait. I'm reading it right now. I'm reading it right now. I can't the listen. I have a hard problem. I have a I have a problem reading. Wait, wait, wait. but you don't. We are not attacking the scans in tandem with each other. You're attacking one part of the scan. I told you there's two parts. That's fine, but just be quiet while I read this. I I have a hard time reading and talking. Oh yeah. Quiet. Okay. Sure. That's fine. That's fine. Vulgar. Do, do, do. I have changed the term lingering sad from residuals. And while you're doing that, feel free to get the other scan. Okay. Mm -hmm. all right and i'll uh i'll be courteous i won't attack your scans until you send them both and explain them yep so here's rika shifting into high gear it looks very very similar to when she did that against what's his name yeah so mm -hmm. So you know how her eye opens up? So she was actually manifested prior to this, but her eye wasn't opened up. When Yuta hugged her and did what and did that shit, like when she's scared for Yuta or something like that, or when she feels for Yuta heavily, that eye tends to open up. So for example, in volume zero, based off that above the statement I sent above, when they were go stronger in terms of their relationship, her eye opened up. And then they were able to produce that large amount of power. Her eye now opens up because she was scared. She was saying, give Yuta back. And then it said, Rika shifted in the high gear and her eye opens up. Mm -hmm. Again, okay. we know what the link mode does in base, right? The link mode is something that gives him a heavy amp. It gives him cursed energy. It, it allows the usage of his cursed technique. It does all those things. But now on top of that, it also states that Rika's shifting into high gear, which I don't know if you think, I don't know what you think about that, but I think shifting into high gear means that she's gaining strength and she's able to fuel Yuta better because her eye opens up. We know that when her eye opens up, based mm -hmm. off the last time that her eye opens up, and Russ Rika is completely functionally different in the manner that she is when she's manifested, mm -hmm. I think it's the same thing okay so that's fine we can agree that rika gets stronger or that rika and yuda get stronger based upon how close they are together we can even agree that rika acts in a similar way where she gets stronger when she has emotional outbursts because of yuda or in regards to yuda that's fine that doesn't mean it's sufficient that doesn't mean it comes anywhere close to the level of power that i'm propositioning right now you'll remember my initial argument i'll recap it because it's been so far since i've talked about it yeah, my initial ahead. argument was as follows yuda hits a black flash it proceeds to do yeah. very little damage to Ghetto. Then they make a binding vow in exchange for Yuta's life to exceed Rika's limits of cursed energy. That takes off half of Ghetto's body. And that that in and of itself already proves that the binding her current vow, limits, correct? Hold you're on, trying to, you're that, not going to go crazy, right? You're saying her current hold limits. On, I'm just trying to recap, right? So that yeah, binding vow, that binding vow in question, which is no longer active and which was not has not been applied since. That was stronger than Black Flash because of that feat and because of the fact that it's inherently implied because it goes beyond the limits of cursed energy for Rika. That would include Black Flash. Black Flash is within the limits of cursed energy. My essential argument is as follows. It's that insofar as Yuta has gotten stronger due to his training in Africa, due to his improved relationship with Rika, whatever you want to argue, I have a quantifiable amplification in volume zero of Yuta being to the power of 2.5 thanks it's to a, Black 
clash. Well, so, I don't know why you continue on. to say no, that. I'm talking, so I'm, talking, hold, I'm, not talk, I'm talking about the specific attack that Ghetto tanked. Ghetto tanked an attack that was to the power of 2.5 of volume. Are you talking about Black Flash? Yes. So what I'm yeah. saying so, is, hold on, wait. The attack that, that hold, hold on, on, hold on. The attack that Ghetto tanked that was to the power of 2.5, right? Yeah. Of, of volume zero Yuta. There is no quantification you can provide, no matter how many times you say Yuta has gotten stronger since then, to say that anything he did in base okay. against. Okay. Yeah. Yuta, so there's three problems. Level. Hold on, hold on. on. I'm almost done. Three I problem. Let you, I let go you, ahead. I am almost go. finished. I let you go. I'm almost finished. The only reason we got into the blast section of the debate, which the blast didn't even kill Ghetto, by the way, but the only reason we got into it's it. Shut him up. I understand. But the only go reason ahead. we got into it is because you tried to argue that Ryu was able to deflect or fight against similar blasts. And I was just demonstrating, well, no, that's a binding vow blast that is far more powerful than even a black flash amp attack. There is no quantification you can provide, and I'm waiting for an argument on it, that current Yuta that Ryu was relative to is able to replicate these levels of power that Ghetto, by the way, in volume zero, not to shotgun, was stated by Kenjaku. Not to shotgun. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, right, because I'm not going to shotgun you, is and you don't have to attack this point right now. I'm just kind of laying yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. It's that we're explicitly told by Kenjaku that Ghetto would have won if he had all of his curses with him. So even this level of power that Amped Yuta was providing, which was far more quantifiably than anything he did against Ryu, Ghetto is reasonably above. I'm just curious, how is Ryu going to be able to hurt this Ghetto? Yes, okay, so you just repeated your I showed multiple times, if you want to check BC scans, the thing that they were doing at the end of volume zero was their relationship progressing. Yuta literally says, I love you. I want to give myself up to you, right? So that's their relationship is progressing. Their connection is strong. And he's also off a of black flash, right? But like I said, you agree that in base, Yuta would be stronger, considerably stronger than he is in volume zero compared to how he is right now in the Kali games, right? Again, you keep on saying that what happened in Volume Zero is that the relationship progressed. That's not true. There is a wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, wait, wait, wait. You asked you ask me a question. Is you asked referring me. to Volume Zero. Wait, hold check on. VC scans. I don't know hold if you read on. that. It literally talks that's about how the relationship's progressing. What are you hold talking on. about? But that's not mutually exclusive with I, my argument. Their relationship can be progressively making them stronger. I also that, included that Hold on, Opo. Not Opo. Sorry, that. my apologies. Bridge, bridge, bridge. You said yeah, you didn't ahead. want to spurg off. I'm trying to answer your question. Yeah, before you're from Hold on. Then. No, 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 no. You said that that is in relation to volume zero. I'm saying that's fine. That's not mutually exclusive with my argument. Two things can be true at once. It could be true that they were getting stronger due to their bond increasing with each other. And it can also be true that the strength increase, the amp they got from the binding vow blows all of that out of the water. Those are not contradictory claims. So why should that argument defeat mine if it's not mutually exclusive? Okay, again, you? I don't think you understand what I'm saying. I said that in, in VC scans, you can see I'm including that relationship amp inside of the, the death thing. I'm fine with that. I already said, if you have someone who's at X power level, so Rika, for example, and you're able to remove the current limitations of her curse technique, right? Or <laughs> curse energy. If you're able to remove those current limitations and you're already at 120%, I agree that's a significant amp. I don't think you understand what my point is. My point is that Yuta individually himself is much more capable than he was in volume zero, right? He's able to produce a higher level of power individually. He has a greater arsenal. So he is way, he's way above than what he was in volume zero individually. Sorry now, to cut you off. Do you have goes? proof? Sorry to cut you off because I've already made an argument I, that your claim is presupposing the negation of, do you have proof? Yeah, do you want Yuta, to go over do you, wait, wait, wait. Do you have proof? And I want you to quantify this. I'm going to hold you to this. Yeah. That Utah in the Culling Games is at least or above a 2.5 times to the power of, so here, of his volume saying. zero you self. Because that's that the threshold. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, we can go over this. We can go over this. You agree that Rika, her cursed energy is described to be like boundless and creepy, right? Uh, okay. Okay. When Yuji met Yuta at the Culling Games, Rika was not manifested. And he said the same thing about him. He said he has the similar curse energy pool of it being boundless and creepy. You remember that or do I have to send that? I remember that. I'm just curious. How does, what does this prove? Okay, exactly? so individually, you would agree that when Rika and Yuta were combining their powers back then, Rika's power, removing the limits of his curse energy, allows it to be boundless and it allows it to be creepy, right? Those are the two description words we got for it, right? Sorry. What? Wait, his curse that when sorry, can you repeat that sentence? I'm not sure I caught yeah, that. Rika's if you were to remove the limitations of Rika's power, 
you have this well of cursed energy that you just a lot like able to draw from in which it's boundless and it's creepy correct that's what the well of cursed energy is that's what she gives him because his cursed energy output welling up from that yeah go ahead I, it's, it's just man i i just want you to kind of get to the point i asked you for a quantification yeah, i'm asking if you agree there's no point in me continuing if you don't agree then we no i agree it. but i'm just asking yeah, you cool. more okay, specifically so you more specifically how are you going to derive a quantification that calling games right. you okay, so here's my is, point. Here's my point more, is, is compared to volume zero self is to the power of 2.5 times wait, wait, by the way by the way by the way hold on that's specifically that one attack otherwise after that it's just a 120 percent amp you agree right but that's fine but if the attack that ghetto tanked was a Black Flash, then that's pretty significant. That's what we're going to base Ghetto's durability off. Wait, 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 hold on. So you think that the Black Flash in that moment in time is hitting for 2.5 to the power times of what it initially would be? That's fine. Like I said. That, yes. The curse how energy is Pulling Games you to above that? that? Well, yeah, yeah. Listen now. So the Curse Energy Blast that happens right after that, that Curse Energy Blast is involves Rika's Curse Energy Pool being utilized to its fullest. You would agree, right? Her Cursed Energy Pool being used to yeah, its fullest because that's, what, that's what it's That's what it's doing. No, it's not, like no. I, hold on. Yes, not just to its fullest, because to its fullest would be the limit. The limit is its fullest. It's going beyond the fullest extent. Yeah, okay, wait, wait, wait. So, again, do you think that that means that the prior to that, it's the infinite creepy thing? Or do you think that it goes beyond that? I'm saying, okay, presumably what it's doing is it's releasing the limiter of her output. I don't think it's. I don't think that Rika's cursed energy is like made suddenly boundless plus or boundless premium. Yeah. I okay. So you think it removes output. the output limiter? So, so what I'm. Yeah, sure. So, like, what are you yeah, building and, and up again, to? And again, how do you think you gain output? I'm just curious. What are you building up to? It feels like yes, you're trying so to like, like is what me able, along. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you what it is. Yuda is able to have that same cursed energy pool. He's described to have the similar cursed energy pool to Rika. He has a boundless well of cursed energy, that's stated by Kenjaku and Yuji off assessment and kenjaku obviously he was in ghetto's body he has his memories so kenjaku and yuji both make the claim that he has this boundless well of cursed energy and that his cursed energy is creepy so then okay. to tie that in what happens in the calling games when he fights ryu so if he himself individually has that pool of cursed energy and he's able to draw on it in a much more you know he's he's way better at doing it right now and then he's doing he's doing it in a much more efficient way and then on top of that you give him the link mode with rika now again with the link mode in rika now you have one person who individually already has that cursed energy pool, right? So now add another person that has that cursed energy pool and now shift that person into high gear. Like I said, what I think the high okay. gear thing symbolizes, hold on. If you agree that Yuda individually himself has that cursed energy pool, and then on top of that, Rika also herself has that cursed energy pool and is able to facilitate Yuda's strength and a cursed technique, and there's more things in his arsenal. And on top of all of those things, you have Rika who shifts into high gear when her eye opens up which is symbolized to be a higher level of strength against Ghetto. Even if you want to say those are two different levels of strength, the two things that are used prior to that, if you combine all these two, th three things in tandem with each other, it shows that you have two people who have already outclassed that level of strength that they were at. Because you have one person who can match the well of cursed energy that was fueling him that created that cursed energy output. So you can already say off that, Yuta himself having that cursed energy pool and being more efficient at utilizing it, is already at that level now multiply now take that with rika and rika sure. in high gear okay i've been letting you speak for quite a while i appreciate yeah, you your, i appreciate your efforts i would just like to make a counter really quickly i don't think yeah, there's a reason i was asking you where you're taking this because i was kind of afraid of where we ended up where our destination was which is that you didn't give me a quantification the reason i'm stressing for you, the reason i'm stressing for a quantification so highly is because i don't think you quite understand the discrepancy of something being to the power of 2.5 listen to this here's an example okay there are stories of mothers of women who have lifted tons of power lifted cars because their children were underneath of them and the the anxiety and the adrenaline was so significant that they were able to do something they could never do otherwise it's probably the case that even if those same women were to train for the next five years to muscle train and to practice every day it's possible that in five years from then they would not be able to replicate that feat because the conditions were just so extreme when they initially lifted that car like i told you earlier in the debate the exponent of something being to the power of 2.5 is the equivalent of a i think you're problem. conflating those hold on wait though. i'm trying to yeah, yeah go ahead i'm just saying you're the equivalent those that's fine the equivalent 
of a 2.5 exponent like that is like a heavyweight boxer who typically punches at 1,000 PSI suddenly punching at 31 million PSI. That's fine. You can, you can say, oh, well, what if the boxer trained? And what if the next time his opponent had a much more fragile jaw? Oh, and what if he had this, this, and this going for him? But the reason I'm asking for an exact or kind of estimated quantification that you can prove is because where I'm coming from, the conditions that Yuta had in his favor to hit that black flash raised him to a level that was so outrageous that there is an extraordinary amount of evidence required on your end to prove that Culling Games Yuta can replicate or exceed that level of power just normally. And I don't think you've okay, demonstrated okay, that. Okay, Hold okay. on. And to finish it off, to finish it off, I'll Go explain ahead. really quickly your argument is actually supremely fallacious because all you're yeah, doing yeah. when you don't provide me a quantification and just give me a bunch of I examples of, hold on, all, hold on, all you're doing when you don't provide a quantification and just list off a bunch of examples or reasons why Yuta is probably stronger since then is you're appealing to your intuition. You're making an emotional intuition-based argument that, that well, there's all of these things that have happened since then. He must be stronger than what Forks quantified, right? The answer is no. I'm using facts. I'm using mathematics and reasoning. You're Forks. using intuition. Um, I will let okay. you go now. I Thank you, you finally. Damn, that's so inconcise. You have someone who's at a 120% amp, by the way, and there's this binding vow in question, which you weren't able to quantify. You just know that he's at a 120% amp, and you're saying that this hit is greater than the black flash because it caused more damage. That's fine. All I said was the, amp, the thing that's occurring, the amp that's happening with the black flash, if he's able to produce this level of power, we already agreed what it's drawing from is Rika's latent ability. So her, her having 120% cursed energy, that's what it draws upon. Her having that larger pool to draw from based off the fact that Black Flash amps your current limitations, it pulls out more of your current limits, right? And goes beyond that. Facilitates you going beyond what your current limits would be, 120%. So that's what they have right now, right? And then they have this unknown X, which is the fact that he has this unknown amount of cursed energy that he's able to draw from, and he's able to outperform the Black Flash that he does, right? So I said uh -huh. that that whole thing is still contingent on the fact that he, she has this infinite and creepy well of cursed energy, right? So I said, if you have, you said I wasn't giving you actual quantification, just using emotions and stuff. That's not true. I gave you one. I said, that's what the cursed energy pool is described to be as, right? So you have that mm -hmm. individual cursed energy pool. We know that Rika has that cursed energy pool. This is Rika in high gear has that cursed energy pool. We have Yuta who did not have that cursed energy pool, who now does have that cursed energy pool. So you want to talk about, oh, if a boxer hits at 1,000, then he goes up to the millions based off this amp. The problem is, if you have Yuta, who, again, this initial blast, this initial output was dependent on this large pool of cursed energy. If you have someone who now matches that pool of cursed energy individually, right, then you take the link mode, who is, able to do, who is able to add on to that with another being who also has that infinite cursed energy pool. If you have both of those things, along with the fact that Rika goes into high gear, I'm saying it should be true, or it could be true, that both of these things in tandem with each other, since you have now not one, but two infinite pools of cursed energy that are clashing together to create a byproduct of strength, right? Which is what they do initially. I said that it should be greater than just 120% amp and some X unknown thing that you're using with the output. It's two infinite pools of cursed energy. We can conclude after we can conclude after this, but man, it's like again the 120 percent thing is borderline irrelevant. The only reason you're clinging to it, I actually I I can't even speculate on the reason you're clinging to it because I've explicitly told you a multitude of times that what I'm basing Ghetto's durability off of is not the 120 percent uh, Yuta boosted uh, power. It's based off the fact that he took a black flash and didn't even bleed. And I've already shown you a black flash is to the exponent of 2.5 times. Okay, so that's number one. Okay. Number two, right? I did quantify the Rika blast with the, and the binding vow in question. I quantified it to be significantly stronger than the black flash that he hit. A, because it did much more damage. And B, because by definition, something that exceeds the limits of cursed energy would exceed, would get black, would exceed black flash, which is within the limits of cursed energy. And finally, I think, I think there was another point. I think there was another, and you can count this as my conclusion. But I think there was yeah, another sorry. point you brought up, and it was about, oh, well, you have these two people with infinite pools of cursed energy. Doug, it's not about their pool of cursed energy. I don't care if you have 10 Yudas with an infinite pool of cursed energy. What the Binding Vow did in question, it didn't make Rika have boundless plus or boundless to the power of boundless cursed energy. What it did is allow her to unleash it to a level that she could not 
before. It allowed her to break that limit. It's like if I have a pool of water, right? I have a swimming pool and I'm trying to take it out with a bucket. I'm trying to take the water out of the pool with a bucket. If I were to make that same binding valve, the equivalent would be if I pulled up with like 10 buckets or I pulled up with a giant bucket that was worth 10 buckets worth. And I started using that instead. It was just about how much cursed energy she could unleash at any given yeah, time. Yeah, that's the claim. And again, and again, one more time. I know you know the claim. You are the no. I'm saying that's the claim. I didn't even say I know it. I said that is the claim. No, sorry, I was trying to do an infinity joke. Oh yeah, okay. It, it doesn't matter. One one last thing. The reason I said you were using emotion, and if you don't like the word emotion, I could understand that has negative connotations. I'll use yeah. the word intuition again, is because. I get it. There are a lot of things to suggest Yura got stronger since then. And I agree. Right. There are. But that's not mutually exclusive with my point. You and the entire audience can recognize that a boxer going from 1,000 PSI to a 31 million PSI is fucking insane. That is a 31,000 yeah, times. That's a 30. Hold on. Sorry. 31 million, mind me. That's a 31,000 yeah, uh, percent. That's a, a 31 problem. times multiplier. And yeah, as yeah, I said, because, because it's an exponential growth, it's actually even more insane when we're talking about superhumans like Yuda. So my point is, my argument, because it's more based in factual information, because it's more quantifiable, because there's more evidence and logic behind it, it is inherently more sturdy and sound than your argument, which is just listing a bunch of things that could have made uh, Yuda uh, stronger and hoping that it bridges the gap and putting faith that it bridges the gap. My argument's not based off of faith. Your argument is. Yeah, again, you can think that when you look at it from the overarching view that you're looking at it, you can obviously describe it in that way. But the problem is you're not viewing the actual contents of the things that I'm listing that amp him. So you describe that he has a black flash and this binding valve thing that was able to outscale that, right? So like I said, if he's able to do that with the with the new binding valve thing that he's able to implement via Rika, I said that this means that Rika's power, Rika's latent ability is what's being drawn out to create that strength. The level new of binding valve? Created, yeah, no, Did you the mean level to say new binding valve? No, I again, like I said, it's it's through Rika. It's still removing the limits of her cursed energy. We already agreed to that, right? Sorry, wait. We already agreed that he's removing the limits of her cursed energy in the culling games. I don't agree to that. No, no. I said during Volume Zero with the binding value, he's able to remove the limiter of her cursed energy, right? Yeah. Do you think he's still doing that in the culling games? Okay, so I'm gonna explain to you why shifting into high gear could would probably or could just be. Him removing the limiters on her cursed energy. You want to go over could, it? Wait, could just be, or do you have like actual in-text facts and evidence for it? Yeah, I think it's consistent that shifting into high gear would be removing the limiters of something. Okay, I just want to make sure you're not going to present me with a possibility. Yeah, no, I think, I think it's I consistent that you remove... If you were to say that removing the limiters of something, right, that's what Yuda does. It's explicitly stated in volume zero that that's what it does. When Rika gets her limiters removed, her eye opens up. So we know two things. We know that first off, in calling games, before Rika opened up her eye... She was performing at one level. Her and Yuda were able to combat with people like Uro, right? Now, when she shifts into high gear, she opens up her eye. And we know that Rika is more of an emotional-based cursed spirit. So when Rika gets emotional, what happens is more strength is drawn out. Would you agree? So hold on. You're saying she opens up her eye because she gets emotional, mm -hmm. right? No, okay, yeah. Normally when her eye opens up, it's because she gets emotional, correct? Yeah, so then my inherent... I'm sure you can, like, precog my argument against you. Right. Like my argument against yours is that oh, so don't okay, monologue. I'm not gonna so monologue. I'm not gonna monologue. Okay, if cool, she cool, I, yeah, I disagree with the like the foundation of your questioning because if she opens her eye because she gets emotional, then her opening her eye isn't proof that she's replicating a level of power similar to that in JJK volume zero. Wait, wait, that's a straw man. That's a straw man. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm saying the basis of this attack being uh, held there to that standard is the fact that the limitations of her cursed energy were removed, right? That's a bigger stretch than Gear 5 Luffy. I don't think that it's proof that her limiter... Doing? I don't think that they're... Unless I'm mistaken, I don't think that it's proof that her limiters are getting removed just because she opens her eyes in both panels. Yeah, I'm back. What did you say? I've... Yeah, I said that just because she opens her eyes in both panels doesn't mean that one is proof that she's achieving a similar level of limit removal. There's a reason why in volume zero, it's stressed that they are making a binding vow specifically to perform this action, okay, I'm back. whereas nothing of this. Are you serious? Are you taking this? Seriously? What are you talking about? I just told you, wait, and did you not wait? I'm sorry. I thought you just said I was back and then you came back and said you were back again. Yeah, and then, and then the person re-entered the room, so I did definitely again. My bad. Okay, I'm just, I just, I just want to make sure you're taking this seriously because I'm doing this because my two teammates are counting on me, and it's like it just feels like you're not taking this seriously. So yeah, anyway, like I, I was saying, the room, what are you talking like I, about? 
okay i just want to make sure because sometimes people just walk out and it's really fucking rude so like oh, what yeah. i was saying okay cool Good what time. i was saying unless i'm mistaken and you can correct me if i'm wrong i may very well be wrong but if you're implying that she gets emotional and opens her eyes in both panels therefore she's reaching a similar level of limit removal i would have to disagree because that kind of skips out on the big talking point that i've been putting up throughout the entirety of the debate that being that in one instance we're specifically told and shown that this level is achieved through a sacrificial binding vow and in the other she's just getting emotional so i okay so it's course. not the same can, can i explain this to you all right in the binding vow instance what happens is is she gets emotional and then yuda also gets emotional and they were like oh they have this little relationship moment which is why i sent that data book scan then what happens is yuda says that I'm going to give up my life to you. And Rika feels heavily emotionally amped by that. What? Because she's like, oh, me and Yuda can finally be together. So I'm a bit, I'm going to get amped. And the conclusion of that still rests. The conclusion of that still lies in the fact that the cursed energy limitations are being removed. Obviously, we have all these things that can lead to the cursed energy limitation being removed. It doesn't matter what does it. It's just the conclusion is still that the cursed energy limitations are being removed. And the indication I'm, of that. Well, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm and confused. I just want to make sure I'm following you. I'm, I'm not trying yeah. to be rude. Are you implying that her curse energy limits were removed versus Ryu? Okay. So that's, like I said, shifting I just want into to high gear. Yes, I think it's implied that when you shift into high gear, especially like someone with Rika, I think that, again, if you have different levels of emotion, but they cause that same conclusion, it doesn't matter how emotionally compelling instance one was. If instance two is shown and depicted, to do the same physical action, which is that the eye gets removed and she shifts and literally it drags it. It says she shifts into high gear, right? Okay. High gear for Rika, as we know, if we want to go off past thresholds of strength, high gear would be exactly what happened against Ghetto. If we wait, go off, wait, how do you know that? Wait, why are you saying that? Wait, wait, wait. I'm telling you why it's consistent that that's only what it could be referring to and that it could, it really doesn't refer to anything else. You want to go over it? Well, I'm just confused because when somebody goes into high gear, presumably that means that they're fighting with their like life oh, or, yeah, their, so their, I think their, actually or with their for life or passion on stake. They're going all out. They're not holding back. That's the thing. But wait, there's wait, a wait, difference. Stop, wait, stop. But, you asked but, me a question. You just asked me a question. Wait, no, I said, do you want to go over it? I didn't say that you were going to go over it first. I said, I'm going to go over you contending. It was my point. You asked me a question. Well, if I'm explaining my confusion to you before you get into it, that could help you. Wait, maybe my wait, hold on, wait, hold on, wait. By explaining my confusion, confusion, by explaining by explaining my confusion. Why are you explaining you, confusion first? At least let me give my justification. If you're confused well, if afterwards, I then wait. Sure. If I explain where I'm coming from, it could help you. I'm literally trying to help you. It can help you explain wait, in a way Forks, that can make me better understand. understand. I'm just saying, wait, Forks, here for the sake of okay. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. You're right. Go yeah, ahead. Go, I whatever. Whatever. Then let me finish. Yeah. Simple. Go ahead. Okay. And if cool. I still don't understand, I'm going to say this is kind of ironic because I was trying to give you the chance. Yeah, I'm yeah, glad we agree. Sure, I'm glad we agree that I can go. So, Forks, like I was saying, the only point of reference we would have for Rika shifting into high gear would be against Getsu. Because prior to this, we've never seen the eye be opened. And two things, Forks. If there's one, the statement that she's shifting into high gear. Two, the fact that the eye is opening, which is the same exact physical thing that was ascribed to when she did initially you know, go all out and remove the limits of her cursed energy. There can be a whole bunch of things that lead up to a conclusion. They could be distinct in what is actually compelling and what is not. It's fine. If the same conclusion is met, the only other point we would have to show Rika in high gear, because again, when Rika was manifested, we can go over each instance. The first time she was manifested against in the classroom, her eye was not open, I don't think. Okay. The first time she was manifested against the monster, against that first monster when Maki and them went into that school, her eye was not opened. All these instances, her eye was not opened. Before, when she was fighting Ghetto with Rhea, with Yuta, her eye was not opened. When she was fighting against Ryuta and Ryu, or with Yuta and against Ryu, her eye was not open. When she shifts into high gear, the only two times she's done that was when she removed the cursed energy limiters in the first instance, and now she shifts into high gear. And I, I think I understand your thing. argument. I think Go I understand ahead. your argument. I think I understand your argument. Okay. Also, so, wait, I, have, I, I was I trying to find... Yeah, I was I trying to, to find... Not about, not about this. I just want to ask the judge a question, okay? Yeah, go ahead and ask the judge a question. Yeah, can we bring C up? Because he's judging. He said he was doing something, but he said he came back. And I think he's listening to this point. So I want to ask C a question. Because I want C to understand both of our There's points. A... I, think C was, I think C was sure. missing for a little bit of your monologuing. No offense. We, I monologue too. I'm not saying it's just C. I understand. I thought C was one of our recording judges. So I don't. No, know he was really an immediate. Tensa, I thought we were doing Tensa and C as immediates. And then what's his name as afterwards? Okay, whatever. I'm not gonna, I'm just saying, I'm not gonna be able to give like a good immediate on this. So if I have to, then I will watch the recording. But 
if when I wake up tomorrow and the judgments are gonna go like Sasuke and C both said either of you won, then I'm not gonna bother like getting a third judgment. Is is that okay? Alright, bro. Thank you too. What's up? Okay, sorry. I just had to check something. Uh, if we're good to go, I just, I mean, I want to conclude okay, so here. quickly. I want to conclude. Soon. I want to conclude so soon. But like, can I? I just want to bring this up, dude. You are actually engaging in a fallacy right now. Not to say, uh, <laughs> I know I sound a little bit nerdy saying that, but you're you're engaging in a affirming the consequent fallacy, actually, which is when you affirm the consequent as the name would suggest, even if the consequent does not imply the precondition. So look at this in general, really quickly. Yeah, I'm looking. If Five I have caffeine, caffeine, I will be awake, I will all, be awake night. all night. I, awake I am night. awake all night. But also, oh, therefore, I had be, caffeine. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Relax. You can be awake all night without having caffeine. It's a very similar situation. I, think, I don't think that's what I'm doing. I, I, want to, I want to finish. Well, I understand. I'm, I'm going to attack. I don't think I'm not going to all. Don't attack that until I finish. Oh, go ahead. As I was saying, you can be awake all night without having had coffee. Similarly, if Rika makes the binding vow and attacks as a product of her emotion towards ghetto, her eye will open. But just because her eye is open does not mean that she has similarly bypassed the limits of cursed energy as the Binding Vow did. And again, this is only further strengthened by the fact that we are told explicitly in VC scans, right, which I don't think you've addressed, both by Mei Mei as well as Ghetto and Yuta himself, that that, that, that Binding Vow was the reason that that attack was so powerful, and yet there was no mention of anything similar in the calling games. So I think yeah, you're affirming you the argument fallaciously, and I think that yeah, I'll tell you, I'll tell you why I'm not doing that at all. Uh, let's say, for example, in instance two, where I stayed awake all night, there was still a little bit of caffeine, right? So, for example, in this case, the caffeine is what I'm equivocating to is emotional, right? It's it's an emotional amp. Because even if you want to say there's a binding vow, that binding vow was dependent on them having this emotional connection. The reason they were able to form this was because Yuda or Rika was so like excited and amped by the fact that Yuda was willing to do this thing that she's wanted for so long. All she wants is to be with Yuda, protect Yuda, to fight for Yuda. That's all she wants, right? So but would you agree that? But would you on, agree hold on, that? Would you, wait, hold on. Just, I would, I hold would, on. Would, no, I'm not. I'm, no, go, ahead, no. go ahead, finish. Go okay, ahead. yeah. So the reason the grounding for this thing taking place was the fact that they had this heavy emotional connection. I'm not disagreeing that this thing can go beyond that. I'm just saying that the reason it's able to take place initially is because of this heavy emotional connection that they have, right? So then, You're, sorry, just to go on, just to go on to prove this, I showed you that Rika had some level of emotional thing going on implemented into this fight. She clearly says, give Yuta back. And we know that her whole sole purpose as a cursed spirit that's tied to Yuta is to protect fight for and to love and live with Yuda. That is her whole goal. So if someone tries to take away from that goal, what they're doing is, quote unquote, taking Yuda. She said, give Yuda back. She got angry. And like I said, she shifted into high gear and shows the same physical resemblance as when she shifted into that same gear against Ghetto, because those are the only two instances we have to go off of, of her shifting into high gear, which is her removing that eye thing and going all out against Ghetto and her doing okay. the same exact thing against you, uh, against you, Ree, right? It's Okay. So the problem it's, it's, I have with it's, I, I, I get the problem. Consequently, what I'm doing is I'm showing you that there's still a little bit of caffeine in the solution. There's still a little bit of coffee. She's still drinking. I get, I get the, I get your point. And like Bridge, you're a smart guy, so it's almost kind of humorous to me that in your attempt to defeat my claim that you were affirming the consequence, you once again affirmed the consequent, right? I don't think that's true. Uh, and I'll, I'll repeat, I'll repeat how you did it, Go just ahead. because it can be true. That the binding vow was formed because Rika was happy that Yuda was going to do this thing, that Yuda was expressing her love, or sorry, his love, and she did it to protect Yuda. But that does not mean that every time Rika is emotionally heavily attached to Yuda and wanting to protect him, that does not mean that every time she is similarly doing something like making a binding I vow think this is a and bypassing the limits of cursed energy. And again, you keep on saying there's only two instances where this happens, and in both instances, she has the same physical appearance, right? And that is neglecting the fact that in one instance, we are explicitly told by Ghetto, by Gojo, by Mei Mei, by Yuda himself... That the binding vow that was Forks, made I think you're is the reason for it. You don't have any proof that a binding vow or any Forks, you're similar. You're strawmanning like crazy right now. 
Go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. You can. Yeah, I'm not, I think I'm not gonna call it. I'm not gonna call it whining, but every time I speak, no, I'd rather you don't. Go I, on I'm sorry. Like every that. time I speak, I'm just so happening to straw man you. I don't know what's going Wait, on. Forks, I can go where you. I go ahead. Man. Yeah, that's fine. You. Go Thank ahead. You. So, like I was saying, forks. The main problem I have is if you go on these straw man points, then we're just gonna go into irrelevant things. I'd rather just stick to the topic. So, mm -hmm. I did not say that it creates. I said I did not say it's a binding vow. I said it creates a similar effect, and I'm gonna tell you this right now. That's what so, I said. Forks, yeah, hold on, hold on. Here's my problem. That's what I said. If That's literally what I said. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, and I'm just going to We, we can ask the VC. Did I not okay, did I not wait, repeatedly say... That's what you said, then I'm just going to point this out. Wait, if, this, if that's what you said, I'm just going to point this out just to address this really quick. What I'm oh. saying is, is if the binding vow leads to the conclusion that her cursed energy limitation is being removed, right? And the indication of that, the two times she has done that is when she does, she opens up that eye. So when that eye gets opened up, it's an indication... Because that's what's shown to us. It symbolizes that that removes her limiter and she's emotionally amped, right? Again, I brought this up earlier. Two different things can be different levels of emotional compelment, right? You can have two different things that are emotionally compelling in dis distinct ways, right? So you can have one thing that doesn't cause as much emotion but still leads to a similar conclusion. And you can have another thing that causes more or has more emotion but leads to the same conclusion. So all I'm saying is, is if this is true, I'm saying that the binding vow could just be the reason that her eye opens up in that instance. And now, currently in the story, she just doesn't need a binding vow to do that anymore. She doesn't need a binding vow to perform at that level anymore. If we're assuming that the binding vow is what lets her perform at that level and lets her open that eye up, I'm, I can just say, I don't think she needs that anymore to be able to perform at that level, to be able to remove the limiter. The binding vow can just be the reason the eye gets opened up, right? And removes the limits of the cursed energy. The conclusion is that the cursed energy limitation is removed. This can be by virtue of a binding vow. But now I'm saying it can be the fact that both of them grow stronger in tandem with each other, and that's why she's able to do it now without the usage of a binding vow. Also, C, do you get the point? C? C? Yeah, my apologies. I had to get a... I had to, use, I had to uh, talk to... Oh, what, what part did I leave off on if you want me to repeat it? No, I heard most of it. I just had to respond to someone on the phone. Uh, but I think I, I think I think I get it. Can we conclude, please? Because Jesus, you know what Boy, I mean. So, uh, you didn't, are you not going to contend that? I don't. I don't think you ever contended that. Shit. Which part do you think I didn't contend? Maybe I missed it. I don't think you contend. Yeah, I'll go over it. I don't think you contended the fact that the binding vow could just be like the key to removing cursed energy because we know that the conclusion, we know the known variable is the fact that the, key, the cursed energy limitation is being removed. I'm saying that the binding vow could just be a facilitator of that, but that's not to say that there can't be another facilitator of that. We know that there's a difference between the current Rika and that Rika. So there could be, be another facilitator of that thing. So for example, yeah, I don't, I don't, don't think there's, I don't think there's proof for that. Wait, that's again, I'm just saying it could be the case. I'm not saying that this I, is, I, wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me explain something. I'm saying this uh -huh. could be true based off the fact that there is a functional difference, right? There's a, there's a difference between those two people. And also, there's multiple new variables that have been introduced into the fight. There's not just this one thing about how, oh, we know that this is the case. Yeah, well, there's a known variable to be had within that fight. But there's multiple okay. new things that have been introduced I, where I can see there could be a new facilitator of her unlocking that I, okay, energy. That's, and by the way, wait, wait, just to, make sure I, that that, wait mean, just to make this clear to the judge, wait, I'm just making something uh, clear to the judge. Wait, you, if you said this already, then why are you saying it? For wait, you? I'm making clear to the judge because there was an instance in which she was not present. So I just want to make this sure, okay. make sure that this is reintroduced and brought up to the judge. So okay. see, just to clarify, I'm saying that this possibility stands to be true, or not true, but just like consistent, based off the fact that the same physical indication happens, and he can't really establish that there's no facilitator of this thing anymore, because the facilitator of it is the fact that there was a binding vow. I'm saying this could be the fact that or her removing her cursed energy limits in the first place could just be the, the facilitator of doing that thing could just be the binding vow. That's fine. Okay. Again, I'm so saying that there is there is a new so... facilitator. Wait, I'm saying there could be a new facilitator in the calling games because the same physical indications happen. And like I said, they prescribe this to be <sighs> categorically known as shifting into high gear. The only two times it's shown to be physically done in that way was against Ghetto and against Ryu. Okay. And it was emotionally oh, driven I by don't... you, by the way. Both okay, times. we get it. I'm actually getting agitated. We get it. You don't have this to repeat this so much. Do you want to get in that boat? You just, this is not funny. We get it. Yeah, I'm okay. not being funny. So in response, I'm sorry. So in response, 
I don't care when you get these possibilities out here. You can argue, you can appeal to possibility, you can argue from, oh, it could be the case, whatever. In fact, I would say that's what you've been doing throughout the duration of this debate. Whenever I provide you with mathematical statistics, with character statements, with feats within the series that are concrete and solid, all you have to provide to me are possibilities and maybes. But even to entertain this possibility, which has no proof for it, okay? Not sure I get is a, No. There's no proof. Nobody I ever says, it. nobody ever even implies or mentions that there was a binding vow taking place between Ryu and, sorry, not Ryu, between Yuta and Rika during the Ryu fight. And Why even if you want to say, even if, wait, I know what you're going to say. Even I, if you want to say, say it doesn't have to be a binding vow. It could just be some other form of power up that gets them to that, like, threshold. Some different facilitator, yeah. The hitters. Yeah. There's, like, Okay, identify them. Like, what, what proof is there? I already did. Like, okay, wait, wait. No, I already fine. did. No, let me finish. No, I did, though. Let you me just finish. Let me answer. finish. You don't understand what I was asking. <gasps> you do not understand what I was asking. I already let me finish. When you You're ramble dumb. to the judge, not even to me, not to the audience, but to I the was judge. rambling to everyone. You're dumb. Go judge. ahead. No, you Go begged. Ahead. You begged for time. Go ahead. To Go, ahead. Go ahead. Judge. You begged for time to talk to Go me. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So go ahead. When I say identify them, I mean A, identify what they are, and then B, provide solid, concrete, non-possibility proof for them. The I, only that doesn't need to be gave, true. The only proof that you gave, right, and it was still only possibility proof, was that, oh, well, in both instances, Rika's eye opened. Oh, in both instances, she got into this high gear state. Well, guess what? You missed one. Team, guess what? You missed Team, one. Guess what? <laughs> what am I guessing? You missed one. You're missing the most important one. Okay, what's the most important one? And okay. then shut your pipe hole. In both instances, in both instances, since you want to not remember things correctly, she's emotionally driven to do so because of the same person, the same person who she lives and dies for, the same thing that caused this in the first place, the same thing that facilitated this okay. level of strength. It's okay, Yuda. I don't need the extra she's emotionally chat. driven I in both instances by Yuda. I don't need the extra chat. Damn. This guy left out the most important thing that he gets gonna consent that my was point. Important. That was the most important yes, thing. That was the most you important part of the point. How's that? After your monologue, you're not a fucking because you're leaving out the most Relaxed. important part of my point. It's Are you not that, it's really not that important. But as I was saying, right, whether or not her opening her eye, right, it, it could be there are all these possibilities. It could be because she's really emotionally invested. It could be that she has this high drive to protect Yuta. It could be any of those things. You're presenting me with a bunch of possibilities. My argument is 1,000 times more predicated You're conflating upon, those two things, by the way. 1,000 times more predicated upon integrity and concreteness because I am offering you things. cold, hard facts. When, yeah, we, you know the problem? When, you, when we are told that they are – sorry, when she breaks her limiters, when she yeah. breaks that threshold, it is told to us. It is shown to us multiple times. There is nothing – there silence? is absolutely nothing that the states or implies – I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry for interrupting your in – I'm sorry for interrupting your interruption. Yeah, that's cool. It's an argument from ignorance. I'm just pointing no, it's out not cool. It's not cool. It's not cool. Oh, it is. I think it is. Because I've case. been pushing for conclusions for 20 minutes, but yeah, every five minutes, you decide this. that right. you want to give a Harry Potter soliloquy to the judge. Nobody cares. Listen. What are you talking about? You've been doing that Listen. too? Are you dumb? I'm not doing that. I'm making well, points. You've been going on I'm making points. Than me. I don't I'm care. If, the I don't care. I don't care. If you, oh, you don't want care? to say, I don't care if you want to say it's possible that her opening her eye could prove that she's at the same level of power as her in volume zero, despite the fact that there's no concrete evidence, only the possibilities that you can bring to me off of a low sample size series. What I'm telling you, oh my god, what I tell you is that when she does break these limiters, when she does go past this level, it is explicitly told to us, it is explicitly shown. That is what I'm coming at you with explicit statements. I'm coming at you with concrete I mean, facts. Okay, yeah, hold on. So, so go, I'm ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. You wait, claimed wait, I was arguing wait, wait. from you ignorance. Three, three How would you justify problems, that? Three justify problems, that three I was problems. arguing from ignorance. Yeah, so three problems. I'll bring that up last because I think the two important stuff is better. So you do realize, number one, the problem with the, the whole thing of it not being concrete and it not being an explicit statement. Here's my issue. If something happens in the series once, right, and it's indicated by one physical attribute, if this thing does not get shown again explicitly, but it's still stated okay. multiple times in different ways, for example, the conclusion of her being lifted or shifted into high gear, that could definitely lead to conclusion that her, her, her curse energy limitations have been removed. That is one possibility that it can lead to. Another one is the fact that her eye opens up, and we know that the other instance in which her eye opened up was the fact 
that her eye opening up meant her cursed energy limitations were removed. Uh, All I'm saying, by the way, you keep saying you're coming with cold hard facts. All you're coming with is the fact that in this instance, there's actual numerical quantification to be had for her strength. But again, the numerical quantification simply leads to the conclusion that Rika's cursed energy limitations are being removed. If this is true, I'm giving instances, you're conflating the two things. I'm not saying that there's an actual numerical quantification to go against that specific part of the argument, but to separate them and to go into the last part, I'm saying that the conclusion stays the same. And I'm you're not giving you're, you're giving an explicit statement that states that her cursed energy limitations were removed. I'm giving pieces of evidence that also show that her cursed energy limitations were removed. I'm not saying that her cursed energy, because if it was disagreeance, if I was saying, oh, in the first instance, her cursed energy limitations were not being removed, then it would be fine if you wanted to say I'm not coming at you with cold hard facts, but that's not what I'm claiming. I'm claiming that the conclusion stays similar. And you saying that there's indications of one instance and it's explicit and saying, oh, in the other instance, it's not explicit. Things don't need to be explicitly stated for them to happen. I gave two indications of those things that lead to the, that could definitely lead to the conclusion that she's shifted in the high gear is removing her cursed energy limitations. Okay. So you so saying again, that your it's entire argument, is an argument from ignorance. Your entire argument boils down to a causation correlation fallacy. If I am there, right, when two airplanes come down, and in both times I'm there when they come down, it would not therefore entail that they came down because I were there. Similarly, it is not entailed that Rika reaches these binding vow, bypass her limits of cursed energy levels of power every time her fucking eye opens and she gets emotional. You have yet to prove that. You're only asserting the possibility. And I would ask you for proof of that. Why is it the case? And don't offer me a possibility why is it the case that when she opens her eyes and goes into high gear she's achieving those levels of power why isn't that just an indicator that she's powering up in general why isn't that just an indicator that she's reached a certain threshold of emotionality you have no evidence and unless you yeah, I in the next, unless in the next 30 or 45 seconds you provide concrete evidence i'm going to push for conclusions because this is ridiculous. yeah and i'm not going to agree this is ridiculous. i'm going to go ahead and give my argument yeah, it is. You ridiculous. can give your so, argument, anyway, but it will be disregarded by every sensible audience member because this you is can ridiculous. think that. Hold on, hold on. You're I just not presenting my main I point. I know it. I yeah, know you can it. think that you know it. That's I know not it. A problem. I know you that. Think I know that you know it. it. I don't have a problem I'm with you thinking that you know it. So you not you only, only give think, an argument. You only, think you, a, you only think you have a possibility that you. Wait, are you going to keep babbling? Are you going to let me get my argument? I know. Are you going to keep babbling, or are you going to give me? Let me get my argument. Go ahead. Go ahead. Provide evidence. Keep acting like a fucking child. I just want everybody to notice how he's not going to give evidence. He's just going to say it's possible again. Just watch. Which is a form of evidence. Oh, which is a form of evidence. Okay, yeah, I'll go ahead. Yeah, Your Honor, it's possible he killed that guy. So throw him in the. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Good one, Bridge. Good one, Bridge. It's possible. So throw him in the slammer. Good one, Bridge. Bridge, it's possible that you lost. Bridge, it's possible you lost. Therefore, you lost. That's a court of law. This is a Discord debate. You're dumb. Okay, You're cool. Dead. It's possible that you lost this Discord debate. Therefore, you it's lost. possible that Good you one, lost. Bridge. We can go over Good, it afterwards. Good one, Bridge. Good one, Bridge. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. It's, anyway, I guess we both lost. Torch it's is possible. so scared of me giving my argument. Holy. Go shit. ahead. I just want everybody to notice how I precogged. You're not going to give evidence. Go ahead. I'll, I'll go on mute. Think, yeah, I think this is a form of evidence. You're fucking retarded. Please stop. Damn. Give, let me give my argument. Fucking dick eater. Okay. Go. So for go like on mute. Saying, yeah. Good. Go ahead. So like I was saying, uh, you keep conflating those two things. I'm saying that the binding vow could just be the facilitator to remove her cursed energy limitations, right? So if this is true, that the binding vow could just be the key to her removing it, I'm saying that in instance two, there could just be another key. So for example, if the key in instance one is both the emotional connection between her and Yuta and the binding vow, and the conclusion stays that her cursed energy limitations are removed, because that's the known variable. The known variable is that the conclusion is that the binding vow and the thing causes her cursed energy limitations to be removed, right? Her removing her cursed energy limitations, like we said earlier and agreed, creates this byproduct in which the strength levels of the output is raised. Her output gets raised by her doing that. If that's true, that means that the binding valve can just be a facilitator. Now, it being a facilitator does not mean that either conclusion is stronger. Like I said, if the facilitator for her opener eye in the first instance is a binding valve, right? Or if it could be a binding valve, that means that in instance two, she just requires less of a threshold to be able to remove her limits because we agree. There's multiple different unknown variables in which we agree Yuta has gotten stronger and the connection between them has gotten stronger. If that's true, then that means there could just be a less threshold to be reached for her to remove her cursed energy limits. Because again, people in Jujutsu Kaisen, when they can get stronger, right, it's easier to access these peaks of strength when you are more capable as a sorcerer. And if they're more capable in tandem with each other when they fight together and she shifts into high gear, it just means there could be a new facilitator. You keep saying I'm coming with possibility, but it's dumb. You never once prove that the binding vow changes the conclusion to the point where it would be considerably stronger. All I'm saying is the binding vow doesn't need to be doing that. What it could just be doing is facilitating the removal of her cursed energy limits. 
because we know that we know. Me, 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 Ew, me, this guy's me, growling. Me, 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 You're immature. You're 23 years old doing this, by the way. Me, 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 23. Me, me, me. How are you 23 <laughs> years old doing this, bro? Is he done? Me, 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 I'll wait. I don't know, bro. Go You're ahead. just repeating yourself. I already pre you, you wouldn't give evidence. I already pre you wouldn't you give evidence. You can think that's not evidence. You what conclude? did you do? What did you do? You went right wait, back. Wait, wait, wait. Do, do you want to conclude? Do you want to conclude? Yeah, conclude? let's conclude the debate. Let's conclude the debate, actually. Okay, yeah, you're dog shit. If you want to conclude not contending that, then go ahead. I did contend it. Do you want to hear my contention again? No, I don't want to hear your contention again. I already told you. Me, me, me. Ew. Yeah, so That's anyway. You have sleep so anyway. apnea. You're nasty as hell. So anyway. You got hella sleep. I pre the audience. audience. I pre to the audience, and they saw that. You can think that it's not. I pre came true oh, that instead of providing yes, evidence, like, lock your dog you just shit. repeat. It's 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 a possibility. So 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 I'm gonna assert. Oh, 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 I, I just don't understand. Know how to apply I just don't understand. I just don't understand why this guy thought. Wait, he you're could not walk tracking the in the debate. slightest. Bit I don't think this, I don't know why this guy thought he could walk into the debate, think shit was sweet, and then not provide evidence. Or and you then literally just don't know how to track it out for him. I don't know how to track. I don't know how to track. Yeah, I said there could be a less. Yeah, you know what? You didn't continue. Yeah, how about you track your missing mother's fucking Let's conclude. Let's conclude. She's been missing in the Sahara Desert for five years. Let's conclude. That's dog shit. Let's conclude. That's dog shit. Let's conclude. That's dog shit. Let's conclude. A whole bunch of pure dog shit. Pure butt water. Let's conclude, butt boy. Let's conclude, African booty scratcher. Yeah, I agree. Go ahead and conclude. And don't. Yeah, let's conclude, monkey man. Stupid ass. Try not to yap challenge. Try not to yap challenge. Go ahead and conclude, bitch. Try not to throw spears challenge. Try not to throw spears challenge. You're just about black as fuck. Can we move on? You're dog shit. That was just not funny. This guy thinks being racist You're is dog funny. shit. That's crazy. Shut the fuck this up, guy boy. thinks being racist is bastard. funny. What the fuck? Big nose bastard, big nose African bastard. What's wrong with you? Can we conclude? I thought you wanted to conclude. I'm trying to let you, and you're trying to make black jokes. You're just weird. Because you're, you're dog shit. You're not even black. black. Look at you. You're just Stand bizarre. Still. Just go, just go, just go ahead and conclude. Stand you bitch. you were still. on your knees begging Stand for still. me to let you conclude, still. and now hey, you're not concluding. What's wrong with you? Stand still. Stand still. What's wrong with you, nigga? Stand still. Hey, What's wrong still. with you, nigga? Stand How still. are you gonna beg stand on your still. knees to let to for hey, me to let still. you conclude, hey, and then still. you're not gonna conclude? Yeah, we can conclude go ahead and now. conclude. Racism is you know not gonna make these niggas think that you're. I don't give a fuck about what racism is not gonna make these niggas think that you're. I don't give a fuck about what I'm learning. I don't give a fuck if they think that I have good rhetoric. I don't give a fuck if they. Z Killer is random. I don't know who that is. Z Killer is the nigga responsible for sending me the scans that can't say the N word. Oh God, you can't say the N word, forks. Oh, but you can make fun about black people chucking spears. Good one, bridge. Okay. Yeah, I can't. What's wrong with so that? So are you going to continue not, whining and bitching about not concluding? Only there's no conclude. chance Forks thinks he can go say the end word. There's no go way. Go ahead and conclude. There's no chance. Okay. That you're yeah, not I'll, I'll go ahead and give this. I, the most important thing that happened in that point, uh, Forks didn't track for shit at the end. I don't care what really happened in the middle because it was just Forks and me monologuing. What happened at the end was Forks failed to track the main argument. Which is that if there's a binding about taking place, I said the known variable, which he never contended, the known variable is the fact that the cursed energy is being, the limitation on it is being removed, right? If that's true, that that is the known variable, right? And Rika, that is her shifting into high gear is what happens against Ryu, right? He goes on to say that I was affirming the consequent. I did not affirm the consequent. I told you there was a compelling reason in both instances. And I said there could be a new facilitator or a slightly less threshold for her to reach the same level. I established that sorcerers and JJK, once they reach these peaks of strength, if they become more combatively capable, it is easier for them to reach those peaks of strength. So if it is easier for those people to reach those same peaks of strength, there could just be a slightly lesser threshold for her to do to reach the same removal of her cursed energy limitation. He never contended that. If, he sh if this is true, and I established that what happens is it's the same physical indication and the same reason. The same reason being that there was an emotional connection happened between Yuda and Rika. If that's true, that there's the same emotional connection happening between the two. And the same thing that's driving her in the first place was that emotional connection. All I said was, if a binding vow is what's used to be able to facilitate the removal of her cursed energy limitations, or it could be what's being used, then in instance two, it does not have to be the same thing. All I'm saying is there's, there's similar physical indications is point one. Point two is the fact that there could be a new key and a slightly lesser threshold for her to reach based off the fact that he did not contend that sorcerers in JJK can reach those new peaks without having to be at similar, at similar you know, thresholds. So for example, she doesn't need to have a binding about to reach limitations being removed. She doesn't need to have a, a heavy emotional thing. She can just have a slightly lesser emotional thing and reach the same conclusion. And like I said, we both agreed that they're both far more capable in calling games. If this is true, I say my point stands to be true. And he's trying to conflate the two things between the possibility and the argument he's making. 
he's giving facts about her quantification over her strength. That's fine. I'm saying that the same threshold of strength can still be reached based off less, <laughs> less requirements being met. If less requirements can be met to meet the same conclusion, then his point cannot stand. He never contended any of that stuff at the end. He kind of just yapped. So yeah, there's no way I have to repeat anything else. I'll just keep it concise. That was like two minutes. So yeah, I'll, I'll just keep it for the same thing. That was I'll two minutes. You're concise. gonna give a five minute conclusion. You are gonna give a five minute conclusion. Watch. <laughs> Ew, you no laugh way. like sour. You laugh no like a way. fucking Pokemon. You're Dutch. Yeah, Can you okay. go? Yeah, Watch, your conclusion is going to be longer than mine, by the way. Go ahead. Watch. Your conclusion is going to be longer than mine. So in conclusion, Go ahead, folks. do you need your diaper changed? What is this tantrum? You Are you dog shit? You're 25 you years old. You baby ass nigga. You baby You're ass 26. nigga. Shut the fuck up. I'm not going to put a bib on your dumb ass nigga. Learn to Are eat you on done? your own, bitch. You're dirty as fuck, bro. So anyways, that. here's my conclusion, nigga. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I can't take this nigga seriously. Listen. You know what can take you seriously? You're 20 Rich, years old. Get off Discord. That's crazy. This nigga can't keep my dick out of his mouth. So in You're conclusion, 20. am I wrong? How's my dick taste, bitch? In conclusion, very very fucking sour because you don't shower, nasty ass boy. So you just did. So you just did admit to having yeah, yeah, yeah. Dick and, in your mouth. Yeah, and so you just and did admit to having my dick with in you? Your yeah, mouth. Yeah, nigga, yo, oh, yo, can we get a soft? Can we get a fucking ahead. nerd emoji in chat, bro? Let's get a nerd emoji in chat for, for who? Me. For you? For you, bitch? You're gonna tell other men to put okay. dick in your mouth? Big as fuck. What? That is not what I said. But can I conclude? Yo, can somebody, how does my dick taste? Yo, yo, can, can you tell this bitch ass nigga to shut the fuck up? Matter of fact, put a dick back in your mouth. Say the Matter of fact, put a dick back in your mouth so you can shut the fuck up, bitch. Not no, mine, I can talk with it in my mouth. Not mine, though, though, nigga. Yeah, so, I'm doing it right now. This nigga so retarded. Is this W rhetoric? Yo, hold on Slash pull is this? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Slash pull is this shit w rhetoric what is he making a poll for out loud too you're making a poll out loud choice one no choice two i'm gonna put yes for like pity shit so if y'all want to vote yes you're dog pity, shit cool. you didn't content anything that well, i said can you go ahead and give your conclusion look, you look they're giving you some pity yeses i'm trying to finish my conclusion you won't stop fucking deep throat and bobbing on my shit nigga you're not bob the builder so stop bobbing on my no, that shit was fire i won't lie so anyway in conclusion for this point at least <sighs> this guy presented a bunch of possibilities that he himself couldn't give evidence for. No feats from the series, no implications from the series. <laughs> I'm sorry, is this nigga having an autistic seizure? What was yes, that I did, I did, I did. Oh my Autism god, I'm overstimming. I'm overstimming. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Shut up, bitch. You are not a surgeon. Oh. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, I'm overstimming. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Can you? I'm can this guy shut? Okay, you know what? I don't need a conclusion, bro. I'm gonna just oh, let Bridge. I'm gonna just let Bri I'm just let Bridges do whatever he wants, bro. Bridges actually oh anti rhetoric God. himself into the fucking oh. ground. I'm overstimming. Actually, for once, oh, I'm gonna ask Sakazuki to mute this guy. Actually, for oh, once, Sakazuki, please mute this guy before oh, this guy fuck. before this guy in an audience full of minors starts moaning about his fucking homoerotic fantasies. Can you please mute this fucking loser? Oh my god. Thank you. So <laughs> wait, he's commenting me. I said I was overstimming because I'm autistic, not because I was horny. Are you dumb? Bridge, notice how nobody's laughing, bro. They're, they they don't find Your it. grandma was dead ass. Not even being funny. And Reaper's laughing. I just wasn't funny uncle. either. Like, I don't know, bro. Your grandma was cool. I don't, I don't really care. Forks. I, I don't give a fuck. You watch Forks. You watch Actually, Forks, matter of fact, please, bro. Hey, is, this hey, you your is this how insecure you are? You're not going to let me conclude? Is this how insecure you are? You're not going to let me conclude? Are you that afraid? Go ahead. Conclude. I'm just saying play Afro beats on your <sighs> fucking chin radio in chat. You're dog shit. Go ahead. What does that even mean? Hurry. Like, uh, Look in chat. You can find out what it means. Are you going to go? Taking five years to go? I don't Dog know shit. if I'm gonna go. Am I gonna go, nigga? The fuck is wrong with you? Uh, are you gonna go? That's for you to answer. Are right you now. having a fucking panic attack? What is this? I already told you I was overstimming because I'm autistic. Okay, Do you have a problem? So, and how no, can you attack a panic when you attack? There's a no person? way. There's no way I gave this guy a panic attack. What the fuck? Wait, no. I said I was having. I said I was so, overstimming. So are you dumb? So are you? Can you just shut the fuck up, please? Wait, again, how can you shut the fuck up when you're supposed to shut up mouth? Not a fuck. Bridge, do you that ever get tired of losing? Do you ever get tired of losing? Wait, how can you get can tired just, of losing? Can we just finish this off? Me? You're not infinity, nigga. Can we finish this off, bro? <laughs> Go ahead, bro. I'm trolling you. Go ahead. Hold on, bro. Hold on, bro. Hold on. Really quickly, OBS, this nigga's actually Tony Shell. I don't know how why could you be a shell. How could I be a shell if I'm a person? 
don't know why you posted Wilt Chamberlain in fucking chat when this nigga is actually Tony Snell, bro. Get the fuck out of here. So anyway, how can I be a snail if I'm a human? In conclusion, how can I be a snail if I'm a human? In conclusion, bitch. Yeah. Okay, in cool. conclusion. So you can't prove you that I'm a, snail, a, a human. Oh, hot kind of thing. Hey, Sakazuki, can you let everybody up on stage <laughs> so if anybody wants to laugh, they can. Cause like, I, um, yeah, like, it's not supposed to be funny. I'm hitting you with the infinity treatment. How can you be funny if you're supposed to be like humorous? You're hitting me with the it's infinity funny and humorous the same thing. I'm trying to, I'm trying to finish the debate, and you're wait. How can time. you finish something you're supposed to complete it? So you're finish. just wasting time. So you're just wasting time. How can you waste time if you waste food? I know your fat ass doesn't waste food. Damn, are you can we fucking conclude, please? Oh wait, my how god. Can we, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. How oh can my you conclude god, if it's not done. What's a conclusion? I don't know what that means. I'm autistic. Go ahead. This is not fucking funny. You change okay, part, how can it be fucking funny if I'm supposed to be humorous? Yo, Sakazuki, can you just tell this guy to shut the fuck up, please? Oh my god. Actually, how about I just put him? I'm just put him on local mute. I just local. How can I shut the fuck up? I'm supposed to just shut up. What the fuck? I don't know what. In conclusion, this guy presented a bunch of possibilities of like alternative ways that Rika could reach this level of power, this exceeding her limitations, binding Val level of power. He never provided evidence for that he only provided possibilities mind you in jjk volume zero it's explicitly stated that she reached this level of power he had no proof other than possibilities that she was able to replicate that within the calling games against ryu so that's dead i don't really care about appeals to possibilities he's not deriving truth from possibilities just because it's a possibility that I won this debate doesn't mean I truthfully did, nor is it a possibility that he won this debate mean that truthfully he did. It's just retarded. It's what lazy people who don't know what they actually believe or don't have an argument resort to when they know that their ass is caught. I think that's all I really need to have to say. I mean, we have a recording. I mean, you guys heard everything that I said up to this point. We can just we can just leave it off here. Yeah, well, we're question seeing, for you. Wait, let's, wait, let's just need it. Wait, wait, hold on. Second, 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 for you. He genuinely didn't contend a single thing that I said at the end. Not I even have, close I have a quick it. question. How can, how can you What's conclude up? if the debate's not over? Thank Colin, you. You're, thank you're you. lucky you're a funny guy. I'll let you off the hook for that one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We can get... Anyway, can now? we just he end the debate? Didn't I still have him on local mute. Hold on, let me take him off. Oh, oh, cool, cool. Yeah, get C in here right now. You genuinely didn't contend anything that I said at the end. I don't understand where you think get off. Get off thinking that you won this. Anyone? Anyone?